the White House, President Eisenhower signs the proclamation that makes Alaska's entry into the Union official, nearly 92 years after Lincoln, Secretary of State, bought the territory from the Russian Tsar for $7 million. The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. The exclusive home of Frontier Gear, built for the rugged Alaskan terrain. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Visit Barney's today at 906 West Northern Lights. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services, helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers, custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. The TreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway, Alaska's own and grown cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation, with exclusive products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce cards, and more. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. Marijuana has intoxicating effects and may be habit-forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The Bait Shack. Located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Snow Pro AK, your snow and ice management company specializing in business and residential properties. They know what it takes to keep your property presentable and safe. Give them a call for a free estimate at 280-7098 or visit lawnproak.com. Double Shovel Cider Company, located off of Arctic and 58th, handcrafted Alaskan-made colonial ciders. They also have a tap room downtown on the corner of 5th and E. Stop by today and taste an award-winning cider. The Alaska Chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaskan public lands, waters, and wildlife. Their goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping our public lands wild. Stand up today and join BHA at backcountryhunters.org. Only part of that got on the right mic. There. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit it we won't say there. who you were talking about. <laughs> when I, I think I got you guys dialed for next year because I also asked to borrow their demo. Oh, nice. Oh, really? Mm, they nice. have demo bikes like Cadillacs and my stuff. Little hit. Hey, did we started? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're ripping. Oh, boy. Yep. You're back. Yeah, yeah man. It was fun. Guess who's back? We're talking back snow again. bikes. Back we're talking again. snow bikes. You I want to talk AKJs. about this water real quick. Oh, the water. The yeah, man. Water, this is man. like feeling like uh, like the new version of life water, bro. Hop water? Oh, yeah. Hop we're talking water. beer hops. Like, like oh, hops. Yeah. The, yeah. What is a hop? A, a, a grain or a plant? What it's, is a hop? It's a plant. It's a, it's a, uh, it's sister plant. It's a marijuana plant. Oh, word? Yeah. Oh, so it's almost, really? It's yeah. almost an herb then. Yeah, it's a, it has like a bud, you know? Hmm. Because I gave some to somebody who was like, oh, man, it smells like weed. And yeah, I'm like, some of right, them do, do right? So. <laughs> <laughs> they, I guess, uh, man, who is it? Uh, it's got a little danky smell. So, someone is making a really danky one right now. Uh, it's uh, it's one we have in there a lot in IPA. And they're putting... It uh, has like the space dust. dust. No. Yeah. It, yeah I think space called, dust is really hoppy I, I think it's called space dust. And oh, then the new one's like, called like dank dust, yeah, or something like that. <laughs> really, and, and then it's like it's like in <laughs> a, it smells like weed. Yeah, yeah. Does yeah. it get you hot? Somebody makes, needs know, to make probably. a super low dose beer. So I think like a six pack is the equivalent of say like ten milligrams. It's a, it's like so a you problem drink a six with six pack, and you can kind of like. Woo. 
I think everyone wants to do that kind of stuff, but uh, oh, is there regulations a, a, against that? Yeah, but it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> on the federal sense. level, for sure, and then uh, and, yeah. and then in our state, yeah, you can't do it. Somebody has to be fun police, man. That's yeah. right. No, but when they allow it, it will come. Well, I was just drinking a lot of Lacroix, a lot of non-alcoholic beer. We yep. drank non-alcoholic beer when we were snow biking, yep. and I'm and I'm drinking a ton of this stuff, and I'm buying it. Not an alcoholic beer is not cheap. And then no. I came across hop water a couple times. Yeah. And it's not cheap either, but there's no calories. There's a little flavor mm. and kind of reminds you of beer. So I'm like, you can, you know, you can do anything you want in the world now. Yeah. You, with YouTube, you can do anything. Oh, yeah. You yeah. can be anybody you want to be. Uh, listen, 100%. I taught myself how to be a barista. Oh, the yeah. girls went to the stupid class and didn't learn anything. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to shout out what class, but yeah. the main one. Yeah. They don't even do like an in-person. They oh, just like really? a video, which is, you know, good for them, I guess. They just yeah. pay to watch this video, but it doesn't show them shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, trying to train the girl. And I was like, you don't know how to do this? Didn't you watch the, didn't you go to the training? So I was like, all right, well, I know what I got to do. Uh-huh. So I went home YouTube YouTube for like three hours, yeah. dude. Went in there the next day, dude. I'm just whipping out yeah. fucking lattes and fucking Brevets all and kind of shit i was like this is how you do it. you got to turn it to the angle and get the whirlpool going and, yeah. and i was like man and watch these videos <laughs> that just reminds me of my old uh hilltop barista days hilltop ski area you used to whip up a latte oh, fuck oh yeah dude. slinging coffees oh yeah for kitty fox oh yeah. nice. i saw the other day and yeah. she still looks young i saw her too yeah, yeah. i saw her at the movies of all i went places. to high school with her oh you did oh yeah trick 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 trill um, trill Trill is her name. They're twin. There's twins. Oh, there's what? Two, they're oh, twin what? girls. Whoa. Oh, Gates. Kitty Gates and Doggy? Was, Gates, was their, Gates was their uh, Trill Gates. original name. Trill Gates, and it's another T. What? Like, like Trill. Maybe I could have saw the twin oh. then, maybe. Yeah, me too. Yeah. She didn't say hi, so it could have. Uh, you know what's crazy is her dad time. lived in the neighborhood I grew up in, like five houses down. And I saw them coming and going all the time. But I can't say that I saw Kitty Fox, man. That was a lot time. of people's first, like. Little, little, little like, Kelly Kapowski. Yeah. Little mom Their crush. First Kelly Kapowski. Yeah. Yeah. Which Kelly was from what show? Say it by the Bell. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Totally. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's Mine a good Mine was, uh, oh, who's the brunette in 90210? Oh, oh the mean yeah. one? Uh, no. That, like, later in the later episodes? No, she was the one that dated uh, the, the dude with the curly hair. Blonde haired curly mm. guy with blue eyes. I, yeah, I she was like oh, Thiessen or something like that. T- but she, that was she kind of she was like the mean one. Then. So well, the that gr- oh, I guess the girl right. that I I'm talking was. about is the same girl because Kelly Kapowski went on to nine hundred two one zero and like the Jay. What do you know seasons. about nine hundred two one zero? Well, I watched some documentary just a while back. They did a documentary on it or something like that, and mm-hmm. how that it really influenced in how Fox. Changed the oh. dynamic of mm-hmm. corporate television and stuff, but uh, and you know, might have been. I watched a lot of it. My wife loved that. Okay, so we had the person yeah. mixed up. There's yeah. two brunettes. This one is Shannon. I'm thinking it was Brenda, Brenda Walsh. The other one yeah. is like Thiessen. Put in, yeah. put in, uh, put in uh, Thiessen. It's Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kelly yeah. Kapowski. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She was on the show in the later years. Uh, but just put in Kelly Kapowski. Kelly Kapowski. That's the nine oh two. That's the kid There's one. That's the Saved by the Bell. Oh, oh not nine oh two and oh Saved by the Bell. Yeah, Saved by the Bell. Okay, Saved. There, right away, huh? There it is, Saved by the Bell. There she is, oh. Tiffany mm, Thiessen. Tiffany yeah. Thiessen. She's the one I'm thinking. Yeah. But she wasn't in nine oh two. Yeah, she came later. Okay. Oh, she did. Oh, mm-hmm. she did join later. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, like, right, like right. at like the end. Okay. I didn't watch 90210 until she went on, and then I was like, I guess I'm going to watch it. Damn. <laughs> Look at your speech, though. They got me. Yeah. Wow. I'll just follow her around. Kelly you're, right about, you're right about YouTube, though, man. You can just – I was checking out all your stuff on your, on your channel. I'm like, wow, dude. Yeah. You're doing a good job. Thanks. Yeah. Um, it, like with the water, I watch some YouTube videos, and I'm mm-hmm. like – well, I know uh, an artesian well on the Chugach Front Range, and I'm like, I, there's some good water there. So 
I start with artesian water and add some hops and add some citrus and bam, it's this I just brewed it over the weekend and mm -hmm. the carbonation did not stick yet. It's, but you want it more carbonated? I want it to look like a LaCroix. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you. yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's just a little light on the carb on yeah, the carbonation. Like it takes at least two days, and I only yeah. had a day and a half in it, and, and I always started drinking it today at work. And, yeah. Okay. And it's half gone now. Yeah. And so yeah. um, it, usually after an, a week of carbonation, carbonating it, mm -hmm. it's a lot better. Yeah. It's, well, this is a nice touch, especially if you want a cold carbonated refreshment, but where you want an ice-cold beer, but you're doing something that – you don't want to be drinking while you're operating yeah. a piece of equipment or machinery or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And that can wait till after. Right. Yeah. But then this is a nice kind of during the day and function and you could drink it at work. <laughs> I do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> not mm -hmm. get in it's, trouble. it's, um, work beer. And then if yeah. like we were talking about earlier, if you want to spike it up, throw a little, uh, gray goose or, uh, tequila, some tequila in there or something. Yeah. You can spice it up. It's really refreshing. Yeah. 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 Thanks good. for sharing, man. That's good. Yeah. Well, no problem. I They're like delicious. the new hop selection better. I everybody does. Yeah. It's and you know, and when you start drinking so much of your own products, mm -hmm. it's like it just tastes the same to me and it's not different. And but everybody's like, This is better. Mm. Yeah. This is better. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, cool. Good. I'm glad that's why I brought it too. So you're like, You guys think it's good? It's good. It's not overbearing. As much right. as I enjoy yeah, the you water, could drink it. you could drink a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's better balanced. Sweet. Yeah, it's Get not too sweet. Going. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And all those other hop ones we were trying, they it it there's like so much residue still that it sticks on your tongue, mm -hmm. and I'm not getting that like where it continues to build up this bitterness on your tongue. Yeah, there wasn't like the citrus was the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right on. Yeah. Hop Good wine. call, man. What's the plan? You're just making that for yourself and the boys. Let's see. I mean, I'm getting close to retirement. and yeah. Oh, she. See if someone well, wants to purchase the rights. Uh, I don't know. I'll just see. You never know, like, what you could do with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, too bad you, you don't know. You are who you like hang around, right? Wine. That's right. You ever want to know yeah. who you're going to be? Yeah. And, yeah. Or in next year or in a couple of years what you're going to be? Just look at who you hang out with. That's what you're going to be. That's good. That's very true. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> No, I mean, that's... So you hang out cases. with the people you want to be like. That's the there trick. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you want to soar with eagles, you can't hang with uh, chickens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, shitting them with the, with the quotes, bro? <laughs> it's the t-shirt. I don't think that's it, though. It's the t-shirt. I know. I, 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 might, I might have banged it up, but it just came out. The eagles part was right. I don't good. think it's chickens. I, or is it hang with... I don't know. What is the saying? I Sounds good. Spruce hands? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Sounded good how you I said it. I thought it sounded like. Yeah. It was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was. So <laughs> the eagles, motherfuckers. With the, the chickens. Hang out with eagles. Yeah. The, I brought uh, Brooks up Wolverine the other day, and uh, she would, she got like a birdie on me, and I was like, oh, oh sweet, yeah. you know? And so I was like go walking over to see what she was looking at, and then she jumped it, and she jumped this spruce hen like feet from me. You know, oh, like man. three or four feet. Those things will we jump like, out of your skin when they do that. Oh, too. yeah. They, it, we're in like thick black spruce. So mm. it had one path directly towards me. Oh. So I like barely ducked my head out of the way. And I mean, it was coming right for my face. And uh, I was like, man, he's going to run it. He thinks I'm a tree. And then uh, anyway, so then I, I duck out of the way. Then I turn around and the thing is on a branch inches from my nose. Oh, it's and, right behind yeah, you? Yeah, just stayed there. And then, yeah, it was crazy, though. Did you lock eyes? Uh, I don't know if I did that. <laughs> lock eye with the devil. <laughs> oh, shoot. No. I just noticed your hat is Powlaris. <laughs> I noticed that, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's what, you know, I, I went, I was at uh, Noosa Guy downtown. <laughs> Sorry, here goes the story. And I'm in the line, and... Uh, <laughs> A guy, the guy checking out, the guy I see, I go there quite a bit, for, get something for lunch and stuff, it's downtown. And uh, he goes, Pal Laris, what's that? And, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, that's a recreational device to ride powder. And he's like, oh, and I'm like, and then I go, and he has a, a Supreme shirt on. Oh. And so I just act kind of dumb. And what's Supreme? And he's like, oh, it's like this super cool brand. And they, they put their logo on bricks and sold them for like $10,000. And I said... 
so people were buying bricks for ten thousand dollars he's like yeah that's super cool and i'm like all right <laughs> <laughs> if you say so <laughs> yeah i got a bridge over is. here <laughs> yeah the hop well water. it's like the shirt right and damone you remember yeah, that one he was walking through the mall with ratner coaching him on how to pick up dr- chicks, chicks <laughs> yeah and and he says no matter where you're at wherever you're at whatever you're doing you just act like that's the greatest place in the world isn't this great? And you're like, if you think that, a lot of times during the day when you're getting bummed out, you're gonna have it's gonna be better. It's the yeah. mindset. That's yeah, it. yeah, it's, it's all positive uh, mental attitude in whatever it is. It's like you can take yourself in a good situation and drag your mindset into the gutter yeah. when everything around you is gorgeous and great. Yeah, or you can be in a shithole hell and be like, well, at least I got homie at least i got my beer or you know you can find some positive i'm alive, in I'm yeah. alive. Yeah. a lot of yeah. times i'll have to go because sometimes you'll have a whatever like a little injury or a little that splinter or mm. something and sometimes i'll be like uh, right now i have actually no nothing yeah no pain yeah what, what's i'm feeling good. Feeling, good. Feeling, feeling good isn't this great isn't this great yeah isn't this great <laughs> yeah but you can do that with with injuries and stuff too just like pff, i'm still gonna go Yep. Still gonna go ride. Just ignore mm-hmm. it. The the goggins. Mm. Yes. Oh yeah, man. Just go for it. <laughs> yeah. Just keep keep on keeping on. That's right. Yep. Exactly. How's the um how's the film going? Good. I'm I'm kinda like I've been watching a lot of other people's stuff and kind of getting a concept because you know I'm from skateboard snowboarding snow machine mm-hmm. just hammer 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 clip 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 yeah and nowadays maybe people like to see some see a face and somebody talking and then some b-roll and and this other stuff kind yeah. of building telling a story yeah so i'm trying to get my full concept down but it's the whole premise is launch codes mm-hmm. is the name of the movie Oh, it's cool. going to be a short film, really. And uh, launch codes is whenever you want to go do something, you have to get launch codes from your significant other, your parents, or whatever. Oh. And so it's like... You need the green you light. Know, yeah, like your bros text you like, hey, let's go surfing or let's go wing, wing foiling or snow biking. And you're like, okay, I'll get my bikes running. And you start aligning everything. You look at the weather. You're like, oh, the weather's good. No. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, now I got to ask the question. You're like, <laughs> hey, honey, can I, can I go snow biking with the crew? And she's like, hey, you better, you better vacuum and take out the garbage and all this. You know, you're yeah. like, okay, cool. And that's I'm on it. Getting launch codes. Yeah. Yeah. Launch codes, dude. And that we're is off. I'm I so like gonna that. use that from now on. Yeah. So that's kind of the I, idea. I've been getting myself in a lot of trouble with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh she calls it lying. I'm like <laughs> it's not a lie if I'm bringing something up and it's just last minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you. I'm like, oh, so you know, we were talking about, um, we we're talking about this hunt, this thing yeah. and, that I booked uh, the cabin for like nine months ago. <laughs> it's like, okay, so it starts on a Saturday, and we're supposed to go do this thing on Thursday, right? And so now I'm like, it's Wednesday. <laughs> I'm like, the calendar's clear. It should be good. Looking for the launch code. So, you know, we've been talking about this thing, and, uh, you know, I really want to go. And she's like, are you going to tell me about this now? I'm like, well, yeah. I didn't want to talk about it on Sunday because you just say no automatically. <laughs> so I figured to wait until later in the week, see how things played out. <laughs> Tomorrow is looking pretty clear. <laughs> and uh, I, just, I like to go up to, out to the bait station. I'm going to go look for a bear, take some dog food or whatever. And she's like, you, you you knew this whole, whole fucking time. This whole time you knew, <laughs> and you lied to me. I'm like, I mean, is it? I mean, try to help me understand. I don't. It's, I, it wasn't not lying, lying. If you didn't say anything. Yeah, I just I was just bringing it up now. You were waiting for optimal timing for the launch. And I'm so so. Can I get that launch code? She's like, Yeah. Well, optimal not. timing. You know when the be- What is the best time to, like, 
tell your wife you dented the car or anything. What is the It's got to be calculated. Time? During a foot massage. Mm. Yeah, that's in pretty hand. good. That's pretty yeah, good. That's pretty good. Well, this is a true story, right? Here we go. Okay. Jay's got launch codes for a Sunday, right? But in order to get those codes, he has to go to church. Okay, no problem. So Jay's hustling before church, truck, snow machine, trailer, only one. Oh, get it all lined up. Only one snow machine on the trailer, right? And he's he's backing it in the driveway, and he's, uh, I don't know, he's not inebriated, but out of it a little bit. And he thinks the snow machine's on the passenger side when it's on the driver's side, and he backs up. And opens up his wife's Honda Accord door like oh, like yeah. a beer can, just or like just rips. Oh sure, with the rip, corner of the trailer, with the corner of the trailer, just opens up this <laughs> Honda Accord. Okay, this, I've seen that. <laughs> this is before church. Before church, uh, Jay doesn't say a thing. Goes to church, waits for the perfect moment. Right when the pastor said, "Can we all bow our heads and pray?" And you just bow your head over and go, "Honey." I ran the trailer into your car. (laughs) It's perfectly silent at that time in church. And what is she going to say? She can't go like, what the? (laughs) (laughs) I did that. (laughs) Uh, She's like, we'll talk about this later. I don't remember what happened, but I did do that. It was That is a good moment. That's a good moment. Did you still uh, keep your launch card? Oh shoot! That was, I was already time. loaded up. Yeah, I think I did. <laughs> I think I, I mean, we just had a good uh, you just uh, tell sermon her. and stuff. Maybe it was no. on forgiveness and stuff. <laughs> 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 <That's how laughs> <gonna go. laughs> well, you just tell her like I already called State Farm. It's already <laughs> taken care of. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> let's go to the shop next week. <laughs> yeah, so the movie it, the movie's going pretty good. I mean, the other thing is is I filmed the entire thing myself. Editing it all myself, the whole thing is, it's all me. It's kind of crazy, like I'm, uh, like 360 camera yeah. and a drone that follows you, yep. like anatomically or AI mm-hmm. crap. Right. It's like. Is it avoiding trees? Yeah. Did you see that stuff on the hillside mm-hmm. burn? Yeah, yeah, that was I nice. just flew that, flew, Yeah. and just ride your bike. It made it, it through that. And it goes around trees. Yeah. It looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. It looks really good. So the, the, it's going to be it's gonna be something else. I'm pretty excited, but it's a lot of work. Like YouTube again. When, when I got into snow biking and stuff, I'm like, this is rad. This is really fun. And But I'm going to work as hard, if not harder, than everybody else doing it. Yeah. Yep. And yep. if you do that, you're going to... You're going to succeed. You're going to rise to the top. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And snow biking, you're talking about timber sledding. Yeah, timber sled, snow bike. Yeah. Yeah, Which is what? Which is a dirt bike with a ski on the front and a track on the back, and it's like riding a bicycle. Um, You know, I thought of a way to describe it. It's like, you know, everybody skis, right? We all have skied before downhill, Mm -hmm. alpine skiing and stuff. And... It takes a lot of physical strength, and it's a little awkward and stuff like that. So imagine you're at Alyeska, and just got off the tram, and you're sitting there, and you, your skis have handlebars yeah, with a throttle on them, mm-hmm. and you're sitting on a chair. Yeah. And then take a run down Alyeska, and you can just ride and yep. turn wherever you want to go. And the bike takes most of the abuse instead of your body. Yeah, it does. You know, and it's really floating around it's super like it's amazingly fun i like i was way taken back i didn't think it was gonna be that good Mm -hmm. it's good you Um, you run a ktm yeah we got your one of your videos going up here yeah is that turning in there yeah and that looks good that's how uh, how wide is that track Oh, no, that's not uh, turning again. Eleven inches wide. The skis. It's the. I think it's eleven inch wide track, and the ski is eleven inch wide. So, oh, so the oh. ski packs the front, the, the snow for the track. A really good it. float too with the big wide ski. Yeah, mm-hmm. you make it look easy. It is easy, bud. You can ride a bike. You can how's snow the, bike. Yeah. How's the turning? Yeah. Is it just like traditional, or is it like counter steering style? It, it's like 
riding a bicycle. Okay, or well, that's it. It's just the same thing. It doesn't like slide. Mm-hmm. You kind of lean, lean to turn. Yeah, uh, kind of like more. carving or yeah. like yeah. skiing or snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, like, took a second to ch- kind of like learn that lean turn. You lean with power. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you know when you're skiing, if you go too slow, you fall over. Yeah, if you're going faster and holds you up the gravity. But it's so Do you pick soft. it up right away. Because uh, you did the video, and I don't know if that was, like, your first the, take. Yeah, no, it was, yeah. It was the first take. The, um, it was fucking rad. Uh, I had never ridden a dirt bike. Oh, wow. So, so it was uh, really so, a learning yeah, kind of curve. And we were talking about it, like, the, the newer snow bikes, they have, like, an auto clutch, right? Yeah, they, you can get a recluse clutch, yeah. which it'll run in gear just sitting there like an ATC or something like that. Okay, so you got to hold the brake. You don't well if you're on flat ground, yeah. Hold the yeah. brake if you're on a hill, but if you're <laughs> just sitting there, it's like being on the ATC. It's just sitting there in gear. You just give it gas; it's going to go. Yeah. Is it yeah. gas like a throttle, like a throttle, or like a yeah, like twist a twist, throttle, like twist a motorcycle? Thr- oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So learning the clutch, I mean, I understood like how clutches work, and I've used clutches and other things, just never a dirt bike. So it's it kind of fun because I got to learn the clutch without getting thrown around. Yeah. Same mm-hmm. one down, four up. Yeah. Yeah, so that was really fun. As soon as I got a, a hang of that, then it, it kind of like all came together. Do you have that ride on YouTube? Yeah, you, you and Jack, how to snow bike? Would yeah, you? man, we put oh, it yeah. on oh, there. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, my bad. Yeah, if uh, you go to AKJ Alaska it, um, YouTube, and we put it on your ours too. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We put it on our, our YouTube too, Alaska Wild Project. That was like what, like two months ago? Maybe? I think it's that far. Isn't it the far right one? No, that's now when you right. stop, can you just sit there? Or you have to put your legs down. Like, will it hold you balance? It it would balance if you can balance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, definitely videos. balance more than what you would expect out of, like, a bike. Okay. You know, it w- it was one, much Jay? easier just to Where sit it on it. it videos on the top up there. Okay, right here. Yep. yep, there you go. And then look at the full-length videos. It's it's the how-to. How to yeah, there you go, bike. how to snow bike. You want some audio on that? Let's watch it real quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This one right here? Yeah. Nope. All right, let's start it over. Uh, let me go check my check the audio connections. Right, Get it on it. Go. Yeah, that 360 cam was pretty rad too. Yeah, it's um. So when you use that camera, you where do you you put it on your helmet? Yeah, on the visor. I had it on Jack's. On my helmet, he was wearing my helmet, and mm-hmm. it was on the visor. You got sound, Daniel? No, you probably have to go to the, th- the I was setting. Already, I, was, I was already connected. Did you restart your computer or something? Mm-mm. No, I'll go back to. But you guys have to try it next yes. year. You ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'll, ready. I'll, I'll, hell I don't yeah, know why it, what, when we didn't that why I didn't go what I was doing. <laughs> it was kind of last minute, and but no, but you told me about it. I don't yeah, remember what I was. You doing. had something going on. You guys couldn't make it because yeah, we paused we, for the next weekend. Yeah thinking that you guys can make it and then uh oh, there's some sort of event on there okay yeah on. i forgot what was i doing i uh, to go back and look oh i'm i'm, I'm hooked up oh you're up your yeah. song we gonna hear it now yeah um there's a delay on the thing i'm gonna turn that down there's not really much audio anyway other than the music but Let's rip. Yeah, let's rip. Let's rip. (laughs) (laughs) But it's frozen on the TV, so it's kind of whack for listening. Do we need to restart it? It's playing. It's playing on his uh, computer. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kill this fucking TV. You should throw something at that thing right now. I would love to. Wait till the 360 camera's on. Jesus (laughs) Christ! (laughs) Oh, there we go. So amateur with this goddamn thing. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, it's super just easy. Wi-Fi just like terrible. riding a bike. Like, yeah. It's easier than skiing or snowboarding, I think. And all the brakes in the rear. Yeah, you just break out the brakes on the tracks. Like on the, it's it, you don't have a foot brake like on a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. It's on the handlebars because like this is you right here, Jack. Right. Yeah, that's no. Jack. Those green snow pants. Sweet There's dude. Jack. Nice, bro. Yeah. You want to give us some and sound? The yeah. sound's there. You turned it down or something. Oh yeah, Jay give, is giving some lessons right here. 
You know, Jack, when you were riding my bike, I didn't think of it at the time. You know, that's... Here's your clutch. Here's a kickstand. No, you're not, you got disconnected or How something. How's it going to... Because when it disconnected from the TV... Keep... That's uh, this every single time? Uh, well... What were you saying, Jack? Well, I was thinking, I was like... I didn't show you throw it on the ground like a couple times that you did. Yeah, but yeah. I was thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, shit, threw my bike on the ground. <laughs> I was like, that's my baby. Yeah, sorry, buddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, just yeah. jumped on, jumped off. Was like, yeah. oh yeah, no, I just bailed a few times. <laughs> yeah, the thing it was oh, kind of like, oh, because you were intimidated by it. It, it kind of was like one of those situations both times where I was like trying to make a corner, yeah, and then gunned it, and I didn't have enough weight leaning one way, and so it just like shot straight, and we were gonna like hit a bank, and so I just yeah. kind of like pushed the machine <laughs> to the side so it yeah. wouldn't get damaged, and then you know save myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just, I was just thinking that the other day, but. No, it's good. Yeah, so this is in the Oh, Jackie boy. <laughs> this is behind, baby, baby behind your house there. This is like yeah. the first rips right here, just kind of learning how to do a <laughs> turn. And But there, there's probably like 18 inches of snow or so we're riding in. Got your helmet on, good boy. Oh, yeah. Just getting some slow turns in. Yeah, this is kind of It's probably right easier to ride right in powder, here. huh? This Wi Fi well, is the next turn. You throw it on the ground. Kills me. Yeah. Is it, <laughs> is it easier to ride in powder? Yeah. In powder, it's awesome. Hard snow, it's not that great, right? And it's not super awesome on a hard tur- on hard trail. Yeah. But in the powder, oh, it's man. just like skiing or snowboarding. or You're just kind of like floating around. In a minute, we start. What, Oh, it started over. Anyway, he had these other trails in the Clearly. back that were these huge loops, and we were going riding those, and those were all powder, and I was getting to just, like, make freshy turns. Wait a minute. Right out of your house is just, boom, right into the mountains like that? Yeah. You're in Bear Valley? Mm-hmm. The top of it. The tan- wow. The tippy? Yeah, the that's tippy badass. Top. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I'm going to maybe do some um, lessons at my house or some demos and stuff like that and yeah. show people how to do it. Because, you know, it's like hot water or snowboarding or anything. When It's good. I want everybody to do it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's That's the way, I mean. Can you just buy that or you got to build that? Well, I bought a, so I didn't really know if I was going to like it or not. So I bought like a $2,000 dirt bike used. And then I bought a used kit for four grand, and you put them together. So mm-hmm. it was about, but all said and done, about seven grand. How long did it take you to put the kit on? The there's they make fitment kits for different bikes. Mm-hmm. So my bike I bought, they didn't make a specific fitment kit, so I had to fiddle with the bushings and stuff mm-hmm. a little bit. But I mean, it, that didn't take me so long to put the track and the ski on mm-hmm. there. It was it's carbureted, so I had to get a carb heater mm. and now new bikes are efi and all this and that yeah, you don't right. need you have an injector you don't need a carb heater is that a two stroke that you bought too yeah i had a oh, two stroke yeah. what you if you're on a four stroke right yeah mm-hmm. if you like that makes 40 horsepower mm-hmm. maybe like a new 450 makes about 60 horsepower and so i'd go riding up at placer and stuff like some of the other stuff mm-hmm. other, and people with 450s they would just eat my cookies but you know, I knew. I uh, I sold that one, and I'm getting a 450, and we're gonna make some magic. <laughs> yeah, and you're gonna yeah. put a kit on it, or are you buying? Yeah. Do they sell them though, ready to go? Mm, oh, you have Arda to do the Cat kit. Tried to once, okay, a couple of years back. It didn't have very good success, but the kits are made by Polaris. I seen you drop the bike there, there Timber was. Sled <laughs> by Polaris, and then you can <laughs> yeah. get virtually anything from 2008. Uh, on dirt bike, 450 dirt bike, they'll make a fit kit, and you can fit the kit to the dirt bike. Got it. Who and, did we have on that was had one of those too? Oh, Thacker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had, he was rallying one of those. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Pull up that. Yep. Pull up the um Polaris timber sled. No, you can you can uh you can buy a lot of them where guys have already done the kits, and then they're selling them off, and then yeah. you don't have to worry about doing the whole thing you can just buy one like jay's so he just decided to sell his mm-hmm. just buy it as a kit yeah there's uh, quite what were you guys asking for a polaris snow bike timber sled Polar. so there's no way to already buy like a brand new one with the kit on it not 
manufactured okay. like no um it would have to be like a third party like person. timber said doesn't like buy some motorcycles and put them on for you no. kind of thing oh well, they no, don't like Arctic cat tried once yeah i think Arctic cat had sherpa motorcycles and they put timber sled kits on them and sold them as Arctic cats okay but i think it only lasted one year and it didn't didn't the, stick didn't stick yeah this was like such a great like day thing. Like if you wanted to just like go rip for the day, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it was so easy. Like you could go between trees that I didn't think I would get between, you know, and it just like well, it rips right through them. Uh, ice fishing sled. <laughs> uh, possibly depending on the snow conditions, but, but that like Jack says, it's, we're in Alaska. The wind blows, mm -hmm. all the snows in the trees. Mm -hmm. and you can go where snow machines can't go so like if you're a blue collar guy with a day job and you're not working from home you can show up on the weekend and still get pow tippers mm -hmm. at, w even though you have a day job because you can go where the snow machines can't side hill like crazy mm -hmm. mm. it's just like riding a bicycle it's yeah. not unlike you know when you're snow machining you got to leverage the snow machine to try and turn it and yeah. do all it's tiring it's somewhat tiring oh yeah i'm not saying snow machining is not fun but it's it's work yeah on a timber sled it's you know it's easy light duty yeah, yeah. i mean if you can ride a bike you can do it and how's the have, gas do oh what did i get what that 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 bike i had i think had a two and a half gallon tank and You'd get two or three hours, depending on how oh. you ran it. and It's good. It's put an extra gas can on the back. Yeah, good to go. But, you know, the thing about it was, though, is you, like, riding in the trees and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I rode up, stopped, got off, right up onto a lynx was, like, right where Jack is. He was nest down there, and he had got up and walked away. You could, in tracks in the woods, you can just follow these animal tracks just all through the woods mm -hmm. yeah yeah we're narrow th spots and stuff yeah we were thinking that it'd be pretty sweet for like winter caribou hunting because you can like really get places you know mm. get through little things and then uh <clears throat> and then if it's like really deep this thing's like way easier to like manhandle if you're getting stuck and yeah by that's yourself what i was about to say machine. i feel like you could get that out a lot easier by to yourself totally than, you know you can actually get in there and like man well you manhandle a snow machine too but I mean, it works yeah, out fast. This is a little bit easier. In the video, you see uh, you see me lifting it a couple times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, it was pretty pretty easy to do. Yeah, they're like maybe 300 pounds, probably around, yeah, about 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. I think the bike's like 225, and the kit's about 100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the track length? That's like a 120-something? Yeah, well, that's a 120. Okay. Like, that's the smallest size. Oh, oh, you can get different lengths. Yeah, and they make a 129, 3-inch paddle. Wow. And then I'm not sure if they're still making a 136, which wasn't super popular. Because you lose so much power. Yeah. Track speed is track what speed. it is. Mm -hmm. When you start losing track speed, you start sinking in the snow, and then you start. Because it doesn't yeah. have as much power as a snow machine. It's yeah. Not, a snow machine will outclimb a timber sled. But, oh, yeah. But the trick is it's like if you want to climb something, it's like ski skinning. You go back and forth because you can side hill. You'll side hill this way. And you'll side hill back that way, and you still can climb things. It just takes you a little longer. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, because you're only generating what you said, sixty horsepower out of a four fifty. Yeah, and you lose a lot of uh, horsepower by the time it's spitting out of the track. Yeah, you it's know, going you, through a couple chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what you're running out of the track by this time it's said and done. Maybe twenty horse. 30 horse, maybe? I don't know. If you carry the two, just, just, just you know guess. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Round down. <laughs> yeah, because what is, what is a today's, you know, badass non turbo snow machine running horsepower? 200 horse or something now? Like crazy. 150, I think, without oh. a turbo. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? Yeah. I just know that's crazy now compared to what it used to yeah. be. Yeah. The old, you know, 600 days. But Is the movie all going to be all timber sled? I think so. I, I I reached out to a couple other people to like, um, you know, can I get some of your footage and this and that? And they're like, I don't, because I'm I'm putting it in a film festival, right? Okay. All oh, right. Downtown and because uh, last year I went on the revival tour, right? A revival because I grew I grew up it was the '70s in in Anchorage, 
And I got my first set of skis from cars. They were called mini skis. They were mm. plastic. Was, cars quality centers? Yeah, cars. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for the right non Alaskan right sleds. <laughs> And, you know, we started skiing, and then we got real skis, and we carried snowboarding and snow machining and stuff. So but in the 70s, there was Warren Miller at West High School. West High School Auditorium is amazing. And you would show up there. I'm, I've got to be like, you know, 10, 12 years old. They had the ski movie here, and then the swap and shop was in the cafeteria at West High School. And this was before, you know, don't do drugs and all this stuff. And so the ski movie would start, that place would explode. Everybody, you know, smoking weed and yelling and, you know, beer cans rolling down like at the movie theater and stuff. <laughs> you know, it was on fire. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm getting older and I'm like, well, and I seen the movie. It was a, it was a different movie. It wasn't Warren Miller. It was at um west high school this year i'm like oh i'm gonna bring my son you know i'm like yeah. i want him to experience this yeah and uh so we go to that and it was nothing it was nothing like i remember <laughs> <laughs> the balcony wasn't even open the balcony's not open what and and it was yeah. not like, nearly as many people people are <clears throat> not as many people and they're numb to it you know you just watch youtube and stuff and yeah, yeah. and so i was like well that sucked and so I'm like, then here comes the ski swap at uh, the Alaska Center, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. the Alaska Center. You're like, this is another story hack. You're, now you better take notes on this one. <laughs> and so I'm. It starts at it, the ski swap starts at noon, and I'm sitting in the parking lot, just sitting there. There's two huge lines out yeah. of the Alaska big Center. Big lines, mm -hmm. big lines, yeah, right? I went too. Yeah. You did? Oh yeah. Okay, Jack. You you like this when you go next year? So. I'm walking up. There's two lines, and one's moving, and, and it's almost 12. Yeah. It's just right before 12, maybe 10 to 12. One's moving, and one's not. Yeah. And I'm all like, well, hell, I'm getting Switching in. lines. I'm getting in the line that's moving. I yeah. didn't even get in the other line, and I'm getting close to the front of the line, and I see these two UAA ski club um, thugs bouncers <laughs> and the muscle and i hear him saying and i heard in the line earlier and one lady said oh that's the line if you bought a raffle ticket and i'm like oh and i and i see him coming up to the front and i see everybody going like this with their phone to the thugs to yeah, the bouncer to show them the ticket so i'm like hmm. <laughs> Boom! I'm in, I'm in. Flash that phone. <laughs> I'm in there. Yeah. Just showing your screensaver. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and look at it. It says, isn't this great? <laughs> 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 They're like, oh yeah. You're all like, my suckers. <laughs> so that's the hack. Mm -hmm. If you buy a raffle ticket from uh, well, the Alaska Ski, exactly. it. I'm blowing it up. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy a yeah. raffle ticket for the ski club, you help them generate money, or the UA ski team, you get into that ski swap 20 minutes early, yeah. and they clean that place they do. out. They do. Oh. I was there like 10 minutes in it. Everything was gone. Yeah, oh, I got go, the go. one thing I wanted, but everything else was gone yeah yeah i needed a new pair of uh skate ski boots and but it, i got the last pair that fit me you know yeah but yeah dude when i got there i got there at like 12 10 yeah. that short line was became a real line but no one realized it and so we just walked straight in because yeah. i was like at late i was like oh fuck we're, we're not getting shit and then uh i got in that short line but they didn't have the bouncer guys there anymore yeah so <laughs> the re the revival <laughs> tour carries on last fall nice so then i see rooster i don't know what's rooster's name from play it again uh, no from uh, he's rooster on instagram he's no, the Ira, 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 Ira. Ira. Oh, yeah i see Ira Roost, going. rooster skier yeah yeah oh don't we all just know people from their Instagram? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for some people, it is that. Nicknames. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyhow. Applejack? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I see on the Rooster Ira's thing, the Northern Aspects Film Festival at the Willowa. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to this. And so I think I'm going to it, and I'm... And it's like buy tickets online, and, and I don't, you know, like I was late here, Kasori coming, and uh, and and I'm like it's the night of, and I'm all like, or no, it's a day or two before, and I want to bring my son, and you know, I'm trying to, you know, show him like, you know, this is how it used to be, yeah, yeah. but and they're sold out. I'm like, oh crap! And I'm like, 
Ira, Ira, can you give me tickets? He's like, yeah, no problem. And he got me tickets. And nice. I got in. He got me some tickets. I had to pay for them. But it's cool, you know. And he's like, he said, and then I see him there. And he's like, you know, it's funny. After you texted me, I had like 20. He tells me I had like 20 tickets left saving people. And he said, you texted me. And then like 20 other people. I was sold out within an hour of you oh, texting oh, me. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, boom, I go to the Willowa, Northern Nassau. You went and flashed your screensaver. <laughs> I, got in there <laughs> they kind of knew me there they, they were, the bouncers knew me there uh but you um, know uh and it's you're sure there's alcohol there and and it's just short films from local people skiing snowboarding i think they had a cat video and just other stuff you know like people's entire youtube channel boom yeah. in one video and it was going off people were stoked you know and I don't know. There's probably weed being smoked and a lot of alcohol. A little bit of that. And it was a good time. Like I remember in the 70s. I was like, nice. oh, cool. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm the like, real this vibe. is cool. What'd your son think? He thought it was good. He yeah. dug it. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad he was. Um, because we're you also got the vote on the movies. Oh, nice. it's a film festival, right, so right. there's um the uh, audience votes, mm -hmm. and uh, we voted for the one guy. I think his name is Rod rob and he made his video out of hatcher pass it was it was mostly snowboarding but so we were talking about the video but yeah it was he thought it was cool but um i'm thinking in my mind i'm like and i think i talked about this at the end of the other podcast we're on i said nobody's making movies and nobody's doing things and and just putting their neck out there yeah, on the yeah. line right just grabbing it mm -hmm. and so i'm thinking well i want to make a movie next year and so i was thinking about making a snow skate movie right because snow skating is it's you don't hurt your knees so much mm -hmm. and maybe you hit the ground hard but it's it's more surfy yeah yeah but uh but then i got into snow biking and so the whole thing might be snow biking well i was thinking you should maybe add some of that foiling in there foiling is really hard to film when you suck <laughs> <laughs> i mean maybe just be like a bloopers of just foils um foil foils yeah foil <laughs> Foiling. I, like i said i'm filling i did i'm filming the whole thing myself i have no camera guy right i have it to be different if somebody well could, you said you had the drone that'll follow you out there the what drone happens when you fall down though does it just hover above you <laughs> expensive to put in the water yeah, like, yeah. The, you, that guy i lost the drone in kodiak did i tell you that story mm -hmm. My first drone, got it from Costco. Yeah. Flew it once in the yard. Go to Kodiak, see Gideon. Yeah, you stay at the lodge. Uh, no, this was, he was staying in town. Okay. I helped him uh, hooked up the greenery. Uh, oh, right. Uh, his, his farm. His farm. Yeah. I, I went and flew, he flew me over. He gave me some airline miles. He's like, come on, help me with electrical. Like, yeah. Okay, we'll hook it up. And so I went and f get there and I'm like, well, let's go fly the drone. I go fly the drone at the windmills. And then we go to the bridge from the, the one big island to the small island. Yeah. I don't know the names of those islands. Yeah, near island bridge. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm all like on the bridge and I'm like, oh, cool. This will be, I'll fly the oh, drone yeah. underneath the bridge. Yeah, dude. And then I'll get a cool shot and there was a boat coming out. Yeah, oh yeah. And I'm standing on the bridge flying the drone and the drone goes underneath the bridge and it's it's an inexpensive one from costco and it loses signal so i'm oh, rookie drone pilot there's a return to home button right yeah automatically i hit return to home what's it do Slide yes. straight up into the bottom of the bridge oh. <laughs> crash in the web yeah and then you can still see the camera i see it turned upside down in the web and oh I, really yeah and i know where it's at yeah but that bridge is scary it's super tall. super scary. Yeah. And I'm not, I was yeah, like. Yeah, what is it, like 200 <laughs> feet up? It's got to be 200 feet. Yeah. In, in, Have oh you yeah, guys been not, on that bridge? You're not going mm. under that. Yeah, no. no, I was not climbing. I left it. Yeah. Don't Hell yeah, it's an ornament now. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a whole other video. <laughs> Are you sure it's 200, 200 feet? It's, you think? No, I'm asking. That's a pretty tall. It is. Massive ships go under it. Yeah. It's big. Oh, okay. it's built yeah. on a mountain across. That's true. To another mountain. Okay. I mean, a, yeah. a rocky hill. I don't yeah. know. It seems tall. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Life or the Costco yeah. one. Yeah, you can just charge that one to the game. 
lesson yeah, learned. I did. So no, I'm not taking my new drone out in the water really too much. Uh, I I did uh, other th- the other part might be crashing the snow. That's like be bicycling in the movie maybe a little bit, or I might make another one that is bicycling <laughs> and put it in the mo- in the movie. You got some good rides in. Yeah, I want to get into that. Let's take a quick break. I want to get into the singles track. Yeah, stuff. I want to see you like a sneak peek at this thing. No, he's been ripping. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. Barney specializes in supplying hunters with the absolute best Alaskan proven gear on the market for some of nature's most rugged and demanding terrain. Whether you're headed to the remote volcanic islands of the Alaska Peninsula in search of a brown bear, or the shale-infested glacial valleys of the Brooks Range for dull sheep, it is critical you choose the right gear for your dream hunt. Don't miss Barney's exclusive brand, Frontier Gear of Alaska. Tested from the high mountains of Tajikistan to the extreme conditions of Alaska, these products were designed for high performance and durability. Frontier Gear was derived from decades of experience hunting big game in Alaska. Paired with other top brands, it provides you the absolute best gear selection anywhere in the world. Stop in at Barney Sports Chalet in Anchorage on Northern Lights or check out their custom website and reference tool at barneysports.com. The Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaska public lands, waters, and wildlife. From national level policy work to engagement with boots on the ground projects from Kotzebue to Ketchikan. BHA performs public land cleanups, hunting and fishing clinics, and community education to help take your game to the next level. BHA's community-minded goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping wild lands wild and fostering the next generation of sportsmen and women for years to come. Make sure to follow BHA Alaska for upcoming events, local brewery pint nights, and more. Stand up for Alaska public lands and waters by supporting the Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Join us today at backcountryhunters.org. The Treehouse AK, your one-stop dispensary located at 341 Boniface Parkway. Be sure to ask the bud tender about their deal of the day because honestly, there's always something good on deck. And guys, listen, this is where the culture lives. At the Treehouse, their dedication to servicing consumers has been developed through a lifetime of involvement in the cannabis culture. They're committed to providing the highest quality products at whatever value your budget affords, while always maintaining the deep-rooted principles that have carried them this far. Their focus is on relationships over transactions, and you can always depend on them to treat you with the respect you deserve. Hit them up at thetreehouseak.com, and remember, you must be 21 years of age to enter their store. We're back. Uh, keep going down. No, keep going down. I think it shows it on there, right there. Is that not launch codes? No, that's not a video. That's, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. You have to hit the volume thing. Yeah, it's insane. Hot to nope, do nope. Right there on the screen, right where the video is. Oh yeah, look at that eagle flew underneath my drone. I got it, man. Yep. Yeah, this and this is a plastic. I'll, uh, I'll start yeah. it over again. Yeah, I'm flying my drone. Uh huh. I'm flying my drone, get, trying to get some B-roll. I'm just flying along. And this eagle flies underneath my drone and lands <laughs> in a tree. Right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was cool. That yeah. is sick, dude. That's perfect. I didn't even know. That's, that's an epic that shot right there. Yeah. Is that Placer? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, <clears throat> are you up on the Grandview side? Um... That's actually Spencer, right? The first one's Spencer. No, the second one's Spencer. The first one's Placer. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So there's the road back there. Yep. Oh. You're on the right side. Damn. Look at you go, nice boy. Nice kick, bud. Yeah. Coming, nice. Coming fall 2023. Launch yeah. codes. Launch codes. Launch codes. That's cool, man. It's great how good that not only the footage is, but the quality of the footage. Yeah, yeah, it is. It came out really good. Yeah. You remember the badass. pushing two VCR days? No. Push, record and oh, yeah. trying to make a video? Yeah, and then it's off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One time my dad got so mad at me, dude. I like re-recorded some stupid show over one of his like 1973 soccer <laughs> oh, World Cup games. Yeah. <laughs> so I re that every Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. Sorry about that, Dad. Damn, my dad was... He had so many tapes of soccer games. 
all Columbia games or no, just a lot of Columbia games, but yeah. just all kind of games like the championship of whatever 1968 World Cup, whatever Uruguay versus whoever Germany. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you'd have like two or three games on one because sometimes they were long. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever you could record. Get them all labeled and shit. Would he watch him? Oh yeah, him? oh yeah, that was his thing. Like we, we had to go to church. He got to stay home and watch soccer. <laughs> his church. <laughs> oh, he chose not to go. He never went to church growing yeah, up. He was like, I don't wash feet. I don't. I held that. I kind of held that in against my mom. I'm not right. really against my mom, but just like oh, he doesn't get to go, but yeah. we have to go. That's yeah. not setting a good Look example. Look at how you turned out, bud. Yeah, I'm saint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that the other day, and um, you know. I'm getting older. My parents are getting older, and uh, I, my our first snow machine was bought at Montgomery Wards mm-hmm. on Northern Lights. It was a Yamaha GS300. And Where was the, Montgomery Wards at? Well, it was REI for before it was REI. Okay. That was Montgomery oh, Wards. Oh, really? Yeah, the original oh, REI uh, on Spinard. Spinard in Northern Lights. Yeah. Yep. that was a Montgomery Wards, and then Safeway on the end is the Alaska Club. Okay. And then there, you could walk between yeah. Montgomery Wards and that. Yep, that's right. And uh, where my dad had a Montgomery Wards credit card. Uh huh. Whoa. Uh oh. Whip that bad boy out. Seventeen hundred bucks for a Yamaha GS three hundred. Put it in the station wagon, and we drove it to the trailer park in Muldoon. <laughs> <laughs> no intent on ever taking it anywhere else and riding it. It's still illegal to ride snow machines in the municipality in, you know, 1976 or yeah. something. Yeah. And I, when you were talking about your dad and, and how he turned out and things like that, and I'm thinking, why was I so crazy? And why did we, well, not get in trouble, but we're a little bit on the edge. Yeah. yeah rowdy. We had... The cops chased us on that snow machine constantly. <laughs> and that's what you learn. Immediately, the cops are coming, run. Yeah. Go. And, <laughs> and exactly right. When you Cherries learn, and berries, I'm out. When you learn that at 8, 9, 10, boom, it's ingrained in you for the rest of your life. You know what? You're right. <laughs> You're right. I got a funny story about that, actually. I don't know if I ever told this one. But me and uh, Ryan Cropper, who mm-hmm. owns the building here, and my other buddy, um, Brian Molds. Um, so we would sneak out at night from our house and we would run around and, and uh, you know, the cops would say some kids are messing around. Who knows what we were doing, breaking windows and shit. And they'd come and one day they like caught us. And so the dude gets out and we just start running, just jumping fences, jumping fences. And he has the spotlight on. And, he, and then the day before at East, they, or was it Wendler? It might have been Wendler actually. Yeah, Wendler. They had brought like the canine unit to do like a demo demonstration and they showed the dog and they had a dude in a suit. And yeah, the dog. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're yeah. running, Tackling dude. We're shit. running and then they put the stoplight, the, the light on and they're like, stop or we'll release the dogs. <laughs> and in my mind, I went right back to the yeah. gym at Wendler. Dude, I just I was like, whoop. I just stopped, <laughs> turned around. And my other two friends kept running. I was like, oh, they're going to fuck them up. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm yeah. thinking about the dogs. I come back and the guy didn't have any dogs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he got me, dude. He took me to my house, dude. My dad's watching an old soccer movie. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys just got away. Just slapping the belt together? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I was so mad, dude. I was so oh. mad that he didn't have the dogs. You didn't rat like, out, you did you? I was like, you liar. You didn't rat out the boys, did oh, you? Oh, hell no. You're like, Never I didn't know I met them at the park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just I just took it. I just took it. Yeah. It wasn't nothing. He just took me home. I was yeah. like, I didn't know what we were doing, but I just remember as I stop or I'll release the dogs. <laughs> I was just stopped. They meet, I was like on top of the fence, and I was like, ah, I just went back on the <laughs> China China side of the fence. Get grabbed by a dog. Oh, right? no way, no, man. No, no. The funny, I mean, literally the day before or yeah. that that day, we had what they had come in the demonstration did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, those dogs can be scary. Oh yeah, Jay Rig is ripping back, uh, like the military uh, boundary line there behind the the park and like um, totem and all that back there. Is that where you oh, guys yeah. were ripping? Yeah, we were riding all of that. I mean, mm-hmm. I remember being down north, more towards Centennial, and oh, okay, down towards the highway, and yeah, just coming behind around the, the power plant. Yeah, behind the power plant. Mm-hmm. Your Dooner. 
I'm a Dooner. Are you a Dooner? I'm a Dooner. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Yeah, Dooners are everywhere, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I remember coming. The old, the old folks' home was back there. It was all yeah. open. Yeah. That's the next shirt, the Dooner. Oh, it yeah. might be coming. Yeah, it, I, need but, a, uh, I need one of those. I'm thinking about making one to Jack that says, I, with him with my helmet on, and he goes, let's rip, and that one. That begin. Yeah. The other beginning of the, the beginning lesson. Of the when, I told, when I taught him on the snowboard. But anyhow, we come around on this corner, me and my brother, both of us on the GS300, and boom, here's a half track, military half track, oh. a whole battalion of troops, like, crawling in the snow, <laughs> and what do we know? Punch it. Let run. <laughs> and my brother's driving, and I'm riding on the back, and I look over, and there's dudes, like, crawling in the snow and shit, and we're like, and we're, we're out of there. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Same thing in the, in the summer, right? I had this YZ250, and there's uh, called Oil Well Road. It goes from, you know, basically Glen P- Highway. Petersville? It, well, no, it, there's another one. It goes from, like, the Glen Highway behind the old folks' home all the way to Stuck Again. There's a pretty oh, yeah. definite yep. oh, 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 that road. Oil well yep, road. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like we're the, uh, on the other side of the dome. Yeah. Yep. Right. And so I'm out there on the YZ250, ripping it down Oil Well Road. Well, here comes the MPs. The MPs got XR650 with sirens on it and stuff, and they're chasing me down Oil Well Road. Oh. And there's this huge mud puddle, right? And I'm on a two-stroke 250, and I'm all like, here comes this puddle. It's got to be at least a 75-foot puddle. Oh. Boom, I just hit, the, just hit the pipe, boom, wheelie through it, made it. And the MPs, they couldn't, the four-stroke wouldn't pull the wheel. Right. And they wadded up and crashed in the puddle. So. <laughs> <laughs> no water crossing going uh, on with that heavy uh, 450. Where was your drone that day? <laughs> I mean, there the was constantly getting chased around their neighborhoods and duning it. Do you remember the rope swing back there? Yeah. Man, uh, that thing was fucking awesome. Well, that hurt some people. <laughs> it, it, I always feared, because like right below it, when it went to its highest point, it was probably like a 100-foot drop, and it was right into Devil's Club. Yeah. Oh. So if you were like, Bleh, fell in there, it was like, oh, it was a bed of devil's club. And there's always oh a ton of alcohol and other stuff going <clears throat> with, with that wing, yep. with that mm-hmm. rope swing. Were you swinging into like a pond? You weren't swinging like off of it. You just swung, swung on it from like a cliff and then you went out and then like you swung back. To the cliff? Like back to it. Yeah, it was like a smooth, like uphill slope. Uh-huh. Slope. So oh, okay. it was like a, a soft kind yeah. of comeback. But it was just like felt risky every yeah. time. It was like if something went wrong, yeah, yeah, that and it sketchy. gave out. But that was this is the only a dooner would know, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> only a dooner would know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did get catastrophically hurt on that, and they shut it down. Yeah, they went and cut it down. Yeah. I don't remember how or why, but I do remember hearing years later talking to another dooner, and they're like, "Oh yeah, things done." Uh, I don't know if I told you that story when I doonered up. Uh, Arctic Valley Road going, you know, Arctic oh, Valley. That's major military. Well, this is in a car. I had this car. I oh. bought this car for 200 bucks. It was a Malibu Classic. And mm. the guy said, oh, it won't start. The ignition's out and all this and that. And I turned the keys on and I crawled under. I gave him 200 bucks first. And I crawled underneath it. And then I just, Tapped you know, the starter. sparked the starter, jumped the starter. It started and I drove it away. And then I just ran a wire and i had a switch and i just hit the switch and it would start but anyways i'm going to arctic valley <laughs> it's been an electrician for years dang, the, the, <laughs> dang the, i don't think the police could come to my house but anyhow my new boss is a cop too actually crazy but now i'm gonna tell the story i'll finish i'm committed now <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely invested <laughs> I pull on uh, I pull on the Glen Highway off of Muldoon in the Malibu Classic. The tags are expired, so I got snow just packed over the plate. You can't see the license Perfect. plate. Perfect. Right? <laughs> and so there's two or three cars in the slow lane. In the winter, it's dumping power, right? It's just dumping. And Arctic Valley military side was still there, and it, you could ride that at night. You could go up there, like a dollar or five bucks, mm-hmm. just pow up there. And like, you could see the lights from town. And so I'm like, oh, there's these slow cars here. And I got off work. So I'm all like, you know, Malibu Classic, 350 Chevy, boom. I pass all these cars and get into the slow lane to turn to go up Arctic Valley Road. Well, the reason those cars were going slow, there was a cop in there, an undercover cop (laughs) in those cars. 
And here he comes. He never put his lights on. And here he comes. He's coming up and he's like alongside of me. He's trying to get in front of me and look at the front license plate. And I'm all like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Arctic Valley Road. I pulled off. He went straight. He had to go straight. He wasn't behind me. <laughs> oh, yeah. For him to have to come back, he'd have to go all the way. You're gonzo. To like. Uh, the mill, the get off Highland, and then come around, right? Yeah, I ate his uh, cookies. No, the, there's the next exit. He could get off to the next exit. What would be the next it's exit? The, I don't remember the name. It's a entrance to this to um, the military to the military yeah. base, well, but it's Arctic also Valley where and then Fort the, Rich. The pull off to Arctic Valley it isn't like a um, like a oh, four it's, way. That's it's right. Early, and that's then right. The four way is like a half mile up, so There'd you could take the, it right there. That's right, because that one's just past the power plant. Pretty much, and then you got Fort Rich, yeah. Jay Bear, and you can turn around. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm just going to get... Did he come around? No. Oh. It was a great pow day. Yeah. All right, night. Pow night. Yeah, he was like, it's not worth it. I, I feel like I'm just going to get cuffed when I lift, leave here or something. They're going to be waiting, you know, when this comes no, out, they're going to come knock on my door. What year was that? <laughs> um, Jeez, 80. Oh, you're clear. 80 something. Yeah. What do they call that? Statute what? of limitations. That's yeah, right. Know, I knew you oh, yeah, no, You're good. It never happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. telling stories. The sledding out there was incredible, too. Show like me the a, video. Like in high school. Yeah. <laughs> going up there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My um, Scott, they used to go around the neighborhood, and, and he went to West and graduated in the 70s, right? And he said they'd go and find some runner sleds around the neighborhood, and yeah. they'd go up there and race down fi- the road. That's what we would do. Yeah, and he oh, said yeah. a runner sled would last maybe two runs, and That's the runners right. would collapse. Yep. Yeah, I've never done that. Oh, yeah. That no. sounds crazy. Yeah, we would do that. We'd have a truck in front of us. <laughs> so hopefully stop. Have you took people. the kids on that sledding now? No, I haven't. I need to. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's the Valley? one on yeah, the side dude. of the road or the new, like, inner tube thing at Arctic Valley? No, 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 no. The, one, the old yeah, the one. one yeah, on the yeah, yeah. I haven't. I need to. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. You should yeah. probably wear... Safety equipment for that, right? Well, I can't bring like rowdy. the bulletproof, no friction uh, sleds that we got. Yeah, like these new inner tubes that the no friction plastic on the bottom. No, those suck. Oh, they're incredible. Not for that. Oh yeah, you would. Die. Oh, no friction. There's oh, those no ones. Friction. No, we have one that sucks. Oh really? Yeah, it's, it's like it's the old Costco fr- one. It friction. doesn't even go fast. It's oh. high friction. It must be like the ultra safety one for kids or something. These ones. Uh, I thought it was gonna be badass. Weird, sucks we we're doing the research and it was like ll bean makes the ones that are oh, like yes this. And yes so that's With what the, the kids flannel, got for the Christmas. flannel thing on it yeah yep. on the top yeah yeah yep, yep. those are gonna Kennedy's save your butt has some your of back. those and they're fucking awesome i wouldn't bring it on it it would it's like a death too wish. fast oh way too fast yeah you yeah. know you need the um dang, remember the old black sleds with the orange handles as the oh brakes? yeah <laughs> Those oh, are yeah. the one, dude. Those were the like, shit. We used to take the three sled, the three ski sleds, and then take old skis, cut the skis, wax them, and mount them on the bottom of the three ski sleds. Damn. So then it would oh, really, really fast. fast. And those were badass because then you could like use that little break. Yeah. And but we would fuck they those make up turns constantly, and having to like rebuild them. Have you done the inner tube? Little no, lift, I want to. Lift thing? Have it, you done it, it? Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. And and then the uh, the chalet has like beer. you know pizza and beer and it has double shovel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no. <clears throat> yeah, that's a cool. Just like uh, get the family out for the afternoon and. But just that little uh, sledding thing. That's awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fun to go. That's a drive yeah. up, sled down, come down, and have another car down there, yeah. kind of a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've well, never actually done that. It's fun. You've never done that? No. Dude, we got to go with the kids, yeah. man. That's Every so time much fun. somebody did it, I, they came home with a broken collarbone or oh, dislocated yeah, yeah. It, that's, something. That's, and yeah. I was like, messed that's, up on that. I was like, <laughs> that's yeah, what we're talking I'll get about. Up there one dude. of these yeah. days. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> well, it, it's crazy. It is fun. I got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> well, you don't got to go. Send well, the kids on down. Yeah. The way. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. Be in the truck, honey. Yeah. Just start drinking. Put them in the LL Bean <laughs> thing. Some coffee. Yeah. The, the LL code. Bean. Yeah. Got the launch code ready. There's no way to slow it down, dude. <laughs> but some days it could be really fa- if it's been icy, then it's treacherous. Yeah. But oh, if it's yeah. like a nice like snow, then it's good. Yeah, oh, dude, you can really die. Yeah. So, but we're at the break. Um, switching gears a little bit. We were talking about like. Snow bikes, kind of like holding off. I'm not so sure. Okay, cool. They're badass now. You kind of mentioned that about the wing foil. Yeah. And that is really blown up. Yeah. And you're into that. 
Yeah, I yeah. like the last year when I came on, I just had starting doing yep. it, and mm-hmm. so I did it uh, all last summer. And okay. um, like Big Lake, Nancy Lake area. No, you s- like I started at Jewel Lake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you get windy at Jewel Lake, I learned there, and then I went to, I got on uh, this form with the kite boarders. Mm-hmm. The kite boarders, uh, they have a posse, and they go, and you kind of when you go and turn an arm. You kind of got to maybe have somebody watching out for you and because the tide there is pretty hectic, maybe mm-hmm. six knots. And so they get together. We go at Peterson Creek and McHugh. And then we did me and this other kid, Christian from Girdwood. We did some downwinding from like Beluga to McHugh. And then we, we uh, he completed the, the uh, what was it? Windy, windy to Beluga. He completed it. I bailed out because uh, my board turtled. Like they call it turtling when your board gets caught by the wind, flips over, the foil comes up. My board turtled, and then it hit my wing and ripped my wing. Oh, oh shit! And so it, I'm out and turning an arm. Tide switch is coming in. My board turtled, ripped my wing, and it still worked. And I made it back to the beach. I bailed out. He he came in and he he went all the way. I got to ride back to the truck, but it can be wing foiling the equipment. Like if you do it at a lake or something, it's pretty safe, pretty easy. Not yeah. easy, but safe. But when you go turn again or uh, arm or Whittier and stuff like that, you, a lot of times I'm by myself too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's good. Shit. You better have your show together because another time I was telling Jack. I was a weedier out the road a little bit, and I hiked down to the ocean, and all my stuff had it down there, and I took off on a tack, and wing, you know, went out probably about a half mile, and went to, did a drive and turned around to come back, and I, the coastline looks all the same. Yeah, it does. You can't tell where you came from, and so I start coming back in, and luckily I found my towel. I could see my towel. I hung it from a, a tree. And I'm like, oh, there's my towel. There's that's where to go back to. Otherwise, you're just coming in some random place on the beach, and you're walking and <laughs> stuff like that. So, yeah, the, that's big in Hawaii. Yeah, that's be the place. Yeah, to practice. yeah. they were all over the place. They were up ripping. There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also, what I was telling Jack is, you know, <clears throat> deliberate cold water immersion. Mm-hmm. Do you guys do that stuff? Hell yeah, cold water oh, immersion. That's deliberate right. cold water immersion. Um, yeah. I haven't done it in a while, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Like jumping in an ice bucket. Or yeah. Cold oh, showers in the morning. Cold showers in the morning. I don't so know if that's cold enough to count. It still works. I do yes. like a cold shower. Yeah. It does count. Like 11 least, minutes a week. endorphins and just like wake up, right? Yeah. So when you're wing foiling or serving in Alaska, you're getting cold water exposure. You may yeah. not real. I mm. didn't ever realize it or not. Right. I was out there, cold water immersion. And then there was a waterfall right when I came back in, right near the place I was wing foiling. And then I went and got in the waterfall. Cold water, super cold water immersion. Yes, that's the real. And then there's a thing called negative ion charged air around waterfalls mm-hmm. that also changes. I was, after that, my dopamine spiked so high. When I got back to the truck and sat in the truck, I was like, <laughs> Wow, I feel so good. I'm so high. This is incredible. Those the combination of those two things, pretty good. Yeah, the wing foiling, the cold water immersion, it was awesome. I'm in. Wow, I'll take you to that spot. Yeah, I want to go. Yeah, Jay's gonna teach me. I'm the wing foil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm teaching him the wing the, foiling. Yeah, and the we're gonna go behind his boat first. Yeah, well, we yeah, and we're gonna either do the boat or the lake, oh, and the then lake. The, and then we're going to the boat, and then we're doing the inlet. Well, you want to learn. And that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also I got a fishing. Is. I got a fishing story it about the scary. inlet. Fishing story in the inlet. But anyways, you learn how to foil, ride the board first, right? Don't yeah. try and learn both of them at once. It's super difficult. Learn how to ride a foil and behind a boat, getting yep. towed, mm-hmm. and then grab the wing, and then learn how to do the wing because you already know how to ride the board. Then you put the two together is the trick how to do it. Oh, so wing off on the board, figure yeah. the board out. Now strap a wing on. Yeah, that's what I saw. Is the wing like a little small thing? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why I saw like, someone out there. Like a, yeah, I saw someone out there Monday coming well, back. 
right? Is that you? No. Yeah, there was someone out there falling. I was like, what is that? It didn't look like a big. Yeah, the big kite. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's right on. It's right in their hands, right yeah, in their face. Yeah, yeah not yeah. that. It doesn't look like, like that shield. big on the road. Yeah, it looks like a shield. Yeah. yeah. It's, oh, that's what they were doing. Yeah, wing foiling. It's less stuff, you know, so, like when you have. By himself. A, and it's less and not so big. Yeah. Was he way out there, like by Beluga? Or? He was He was by, um, where was it by? He was by Beluga, but he wasn't like far off the shore. Yeah. He was just kind of keeping around there. Well, Tony Schwamm and um, a couple other guys have been doing downwinders too. You it was know, green. It's all green. Oh, the downwinders, what now? Downwinder is the wind. Let's say the wind always blows um, up there, up to Plaza. Out of turn again, it blows out, which would be that's a east wind. There's not a west wind. Coming from the west, blowing to the east, it's a west wind. It always blows towards town right. and turning it. And so you get in at beluga at high tide or before high tide because mm -hmm. once the tide switches mm -hmm. you got some the water gets rough and uh when it's going out or either you want to like outgoing tide high tide to outgoing tide when it switches to come back in uh -huh. it'll stop you okay if you can't do a jibe and tack and get keep going forward mm -hmm. you keep getting pushed back you mm -hmm. never make it to your goal oh right but oh. uh so yeah, the the thing is, if it's when you're wing foiling, you got to hold position or stay upwind. If you keep going downwind, you're walking back to the truck. Right. Oh, okay. So the whole thing is hold position and tack upwind, and then ride back down. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, so it's, it's little movements like this. Yeah, you go out like sailing up yeah. and then down. Yeah. yeah. But as you're going, okay, that's got the it, strategy. Got it. Yeah. And so on a downwinder, you have another car parked down there, or two people, uh. and so you can just go downwind. You don't care. It's easier, yeah. but as soon as you get going as fast as the wind, you have no energy and you start to come off foil and things like that. Ah. But what I've just bought, and finally they shift it from Aust Australia, is a foil drive. So. You know I'm in the oh, e-biking. Uh, like, get that. You did get one of those. Yeah, I. It's a DIY yeah. propeller and battery <laughs> for your foil. Heck yeah! And so on this thing is you put the motor about a foot down on the mast. The mast is 75 centimeters. Uh -huh. Okay. And you put it down about a foot or so. And so my idea is, and somebody confirmed this to me in Hawaii. And the harbor, he said, all the kids were waiting right outside the harbor. When the boats go out, the kids were out there with their foils and paddle boards catching the boat waves. So my idea is foil drive, hang out at the mouth of Whittier yeah. or Harbor. When the big boats leave, yeah. you hit the trigger, get that throttle, get you going, get you on foil. You have a paddle, like a paddle board. And then once you get on foil, the foils are so efficient, you can just ride the boat wake oh mm -hmm. yeah and just do that mm -hmm. and just do laps right there the waves are coming to me Man, now i'm gonna awesome. bring them right to me i don't have to and you don't have to run the motor the whole time once you're up right once you're up it, you don't have to run the motor so supposedly it it uh if you run the motor wide open it only lasts about like 20 minutes constantly yeah but if you're doing it intermittently you can get like <clears throat> two hours out of the battery sweet just to get going just to get going to ride yeah. the wave that was the yeah. whole point with me was I just want to ride waves. Wind and water is not that much fun, actually. It's hmm. crazy. It yeah. can get crazy. Yeah. And so. Yeah, it looks really wicked out in uh, turning an arm. Yeah. That shit looks violent. So that's why I'm like, okay, I can do this. And i done that. And I'm like, Dude, I, I want to get this foil drive and, and try that. So in another couple of weeks, and you, yeah. you might be riding that next. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Is anyone catching the boar tide with those? Yeah, Darren Mattingly, he's catching it. I think he caught it on a regular one, and he's got an e-foil, which is, they're pretty expensive. Right. But there was something on Instagram. He killed it. I, Darren, you know, here's something when uh, uh, snow biking and foiling, me, Darren, and uh, my friend Dennis, we all went a plaster snow biking, Bluebird Day, 18 inches pow. Yeah. Some of that video, awesome day. We come back to the parking lot, and Darren's like, okay, I'm going back. I got to go back to Maui. I got a ticket. I'm leaving. And I'm like, oh, dang it, Darren, you're going back to Maui, and you're going foiling and all this and that. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, he's like, shit, I, I guess I'll just be out here plastering. He's like, bro, 
today out at Placer is better than Maui. And I'm like, that's a good point. I'll be on the Placer. Yeah. <laughs> so and it's all like, how you, you know, how you look at it. That yeah. mindset. Yeah. That mindset, that's it right. It is really nice back there in the spring. You got long daylight and yeah. powder in the views. And, yeah, I mean, Maui on the beach. Tough to beat. to beat. But Classer. I dig your enthusiasm <laughs> on your snow biking situation. Yeah, well, I mean, it's 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 uh, well, you can't be in Maui, so this is what you got. So make the best of it. And that is that is very nice. Lemons, you make lemonade, baby, and it's gonna be good. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be tasty. Well, yeah, full mm-hmm. drive. We'll try that. Yeah, we the, definitely need to yeah, we'll hit the take lake, the, the boat out there, and do boat, it too. the lake. Yeah. We're gonna do it because we make our own wake, and it'd yeah. be fun. Will you wear a dry suit? No, <clears throat> five four wetsuit. Yeah, and that and do you think that some of the swell out there is, and like if we get into certain spots with uh, like good current, that it's enough energy to take the foil without the wind, without the. I think the, like kite or the shield. When you get good, like yeah. Darren, he's good. Like he can ride probably ocean open. Swell. He's buying a um, a downwind board which is long and narrow, mm-hmm. and so you can actually paddle with a paddle and get up and ride open ocean swell oh you can oh wow yeah like not breaking waves just open ocean right yeah rollers swell. yeah right. wow and it, where's he using that at in maui in maui okay. yeah yeah well i i the, everybody keeps looking out here and turn again when turn again is coming in and out and you look out there there's six foot rollers out there yeah oh yeah on the current wave train mm-hmm. I, but um, I think between me and us, where we're at, yeah, we we gotta get some practice. In. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, before you for hitting sure. those things, hundred uh, percent. <laughs> so I was wondering, my actually, my son asked, like, well, what happens if you let go of the shield, the wing, the wing? Yeah, you have a leash on your wrist, it's a tether. Or, um, I have a waist harness that does he get power? And he's like, man, that thing would just fly me up. No, it could. Yeah, yeah it, it picks you up, and that par- partly how it gets you on foil. It lifts you up oh, okay. out of the it's water. Part of the fun. Yeah, but if you let go of it, it just flags out. It just flies like a kite oh, okay. with no tension on it. Gotcha. You know, pulling so it just drop back down. Yeah, it just kind of flaps there in the wind. So when these guys downwind and stuff, and they catch waves, they'll wing onto the wave catch the wave and once they're riding the wave they just flag out the wing they just hold it behind them and it just kind of floats there mm. and they surf the wave that's the whole point is surfing waves yeah okay i mean winging's cool but yeah i, I want to ride waves for a long energy. time yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> feel like you're floating underneath the other oh but the fishing turning an arm not that it was yeah, yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. that turning an arm fishing story it was ship creek Oh, Ship Creek story? Ship Creek story. So, snowboard camp, right? Yep. Borderline snowboard camp. Awesome. Yep. Oh, my goodness. So, some of the, um, oh, dang it, what would be a good term? Asians come over for camp, and they go to snowboard camp, and they, they want to go fishing. Yeah. They want to go fishing for and they ask me to take them fishing. Okay, and well, what do I know? I know, well, you can catch king, and, and uh, now... This is when snowboard camp is. Yeah. yeah would right start now, next. Spring. Yeah. Next. The beginning of this next month would start. Yeah. And so, okay, let's go down the ship Creek and you know, Jay's got size 11 waders and their feet are probably nine. And uh, <laughs> so I give him my 11 size waders and we go out to ship Creek and uh, fishing for King. So, you know, not at the mouth, but a little, I'm pretty good at fishing down the ship Creek. Yeah. I can catch some fish. They want to bite my stuff. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> they receive it. <laughs> <laughs> They're receiving. So we're out there, and I tell them, you know, that mud down there, you can, you got to keep moving. You can't stand in one place for five minutes or if that. you got to keep moving. So Jay's down there. He's already received a couple kings, and he let them go because – you know, they didn't like his uh, bait or something where they were there eating on it or whatever like that. And so the Asian guy is fishing. He hasn't caught one yet, but he's, I said, you got to keep moving. He's been standing in the same place for about five or ten minutes. Uh-oh. And then, boom, he hooks up on a, a king, and it's just like, wah, taking all the lines. My pole, my boots, everything's mine. 
my line, my I look at the reel, it's almost out of line. And I grab the line, give me the pole. And he can't move. He's stuck in the mud. He can't move. He's, yeah. And so I grab the pole, run down the bank, fight most of the fish out, bring it back, hand it to him. And then he reels it in. Still stuck. Still stuck in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> reels it in, still stuck in the mud. And uh, and he says, oh, King Salmon, we keep it. I'm like, no, nah, it's hooked in the ass, bud. You can't keep it. And we had to let it go. But then, you know, I had to, he had to get out of the boots and. And then I had to pull the boots out, but he caught a king salmon stuck in the mud. All right, that, from snowboard camp to that, stuck in the mud. Got that <laughs> like that muddy, silty uh, feet. Yeah, after you get yeah. out of those boots, you know. Oh man. Speaking of that, I think when the show comes out, that derby's on. Nice. June that night. We'll have started, right? We'll have started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go down there and win the derby. Yeah, I got some VIP. Got, got some VIP tickets. Get some money for that next. Camera. <clears throat> I have some other ideas of fishing contests, but um, and I was more singing spear fishing too. You know, oh like, yeah, right. Like well, I've caught a lot of fish, and it, you know it's fun and all in and the Kenai, everywhere <laughs> behind the raft. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell that story? No. <laughs> I and oh. it, I took some other people down the Kenai going fishing too, and this one guy was so excited he. He dick slapped the, the kid fish when he caught it. He was so excited. And it was crazy. But and then the guide's like, "Dude, you can never bring these guys back on my boat." <laughs> but dude, I forgot what I was talking about there. Oh man! Uh, we'll be right back. We'll take a quick break so that you can remember. <laughs> Tailored Restoration, 24-hour emergency home services, helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Tailored has an emergency response number with trained professionals available to help you at any time, day or night. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Make an appointment today at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. At Total Truck, you can find brands such as ARE, RSI Smart Caps, Goose Gear, iCamper, Front Runner, Rigid Lights, Rhino Linings Bed Liners, and everything you need to outfit your truck or SUV. Alaska Overlander provides 4x4 vehicles and expedition trailers, custom modified for Alaskan adventures and outfitted with rooftop tents, fridges, and all the camping and cooking gear you need to start exploring. Visit them at alaskaoverlander.com. They're busy down there at Alaska Overlander. Yeah, they are, man. Man, they're just, man, they are just loading up. Did you get here a little bit? Rigs this and all kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're busy down there putting yeah, in all like kind of stuff. Busy season for that. The tents and all that. Mm-hmm. Man, I uh, this weekend. Um, uh, do you remember Noah? Do you remember meeting Noah? Works for Gary and them. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, he found an old. <sighs> I forgot to ask him the exact year, but it's the. Like eighty something Subaru Loyal, so it's like the wagon, the four wheel drive wagon. Mm. All Subarus are four wheel drive, but he bought it and uh, kind of restored it. So he like the old put one. the leveling kit and rebuilt the motor, like a one point eight or something in it. Rustoleum painted the bat the 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 whole thing like uh, military matte green, repainted all the moldings. Came across. Um, an overlander tent. So he mounted a bracket on there, and so he's got this old Loyal. She's got a picture of the damn thing uh, with the rooftop tent coming off of it. Nice. And he's getting ready to sell it. He just got done putting all this money and time into restoring it. And uh, I'm like, dude, somebody here, as soon as that thing hits marketplace, Someone especially with the tent up. on top, you already know. I mean, it's with gone. the way that that, um, that thing's – that uh activity i guess recreational activity market, is trending yeah. market yeah um 
So. That, well, I mean, you're going to get a, some Subaru Geek number one, and then it's going to have the tent on top. Just poosh. It's good to go. It's really cool. It was really, really neat the way it was set up, especially off of a Subaru, an old Subaru. It just looks so Alaskan. You know what I mean? Because we're already a huge Subaru state as it is. Yeah. But you don't see a lot of those old loyals running around. Or like Subaru Brats. Remember the truck? No. Yeah. With the chariot with the seats oh, in the back? Oh, yeah. How yeah. is that ever like legal to put <laughs> seats in the back of a truck? It was something to get past regulations. Like if it had more seats in it, that they oh. could import them for a certain reason. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, they had seatbelts and shit in there. Yeah. They were it, just exposed. It was like some sort of import fee. Mm. They, they were getting around something. It was cheaper to import them if it had more seats. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Remember the um, the Eagles? What's it called? The Eagle? That AMC oh, those are awesome. Yeah. What was it called? AMC Eagle. Yeah, the yeah. All-wheel, all-wheel drive wagons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, American Motors Corporation. Yes. Is that those what, were badass. Is that what Wayne had in Wayne's World? Pacer. Oh, he had a Pacer. Yeah. What, was did, that, you, what did you was say? Was that Wayne's car? Again? Oh, yeah. Um, Amer- AMC Eagle. I think it was American Motor Corporation. Mm-hmm. And then Chrysler bought them. Yeah, AMC made like the Gremlin. Gremlin, the Pacer. Pacer, the Eagle. Eagle. Oh, and it had the wood panel, too. Yeah, the wood bro. panel. Oh, they need man. to bring that thing back somehow. Turn that TV on. Maybe I can connect and I can show that. Yeah, for somebody needs, to, somebody needs to the, bring that back. The AMC Eagle. Yeah, Just that's a quick. that's a really neat um, See car. That, you know. That's what I think we brought the GS300 home in. The station wagon was an AMC Eagle. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that was your guys' wagon that you had? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember this one time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those things are so cool. It'll turn off in a minute. It was a, oh, yeah, that one. Oh, that one. Oh, man. It was, a, it was the holidays, right? And my fo- we would go to the, the in-laws over in Spinard for uh, uh, Christmas. Yeah. Have Christmas over in Spinard. And folks are drinking quite a bit, but... What what Jay's Jay's probably twelve, and um, well we've been drinking. Let Jay drive home. Never drove before, right? <laughs> so I come I come around that corner, uh, turning um, Minnesota to Tudor because we're going back to Muldoon, right? So yeah. you got to go all the way, come around that corner, and you know how two tr- uh, two lanes turn, uh-huh. two turn lanes. Yeah. Well, Jay, you got a little sideways. It was winter. You got a little sideways and tail slapped the car next to him clipped him pulled over and me and my dad switched seats and they exchanged information but <laughs> that was in the amc eagle i bet that eagle didn't get a scratch on it no i don't think it did no those things were tanks actually those things were really one of the best like uh safety vehicles structurally or collisions it was, in its really? day yeah they were tanks man they were tanks. Look at man, the they two-door. Really, they really oh, got them yeah. pretty. Damn, look at this one. Bro. Some of them got them tricked out, man. Yeah, lifted, big old mud mm-hmm. tires on it. Yeah, that would be. They bring that back. Fun. Bring that back. And did everybody's parents have a station wagon, though? Wasn't that a thing? I know we had one, man. Cool. We used to make Homer runs in a station wagon. Yeah. Shit, my Dude, grandpa. I remember driving to Hannah. In Maui, it's talking about Maui in the back of a station wagon, sitting mm. in the back. Oh, like, Hana, he's sit Hana, 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 with the, the window. Road, down. I got so sick, Hana. dude. I got yeah. so sick. Be brutal. <laughs> Looking backwards on that road, I, I have <laughs> never heard anybody say they enjoyed that drive. No, no. I've never done it because I keep being told it's not worth it. Yeah. Like I guess the town is dope. Like Hana, the little town is cool. Yeah. But there's just some cool there. like hiking trails over there and stuff. But there's some sketchiness of about them too, like who owns the land and oh yeah. yeah. There's like a lot of science. I say the locals aren't really too through. excited. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't force my kids to do it. My parents used to force us every time to go to Hana. I was like, oh, well, there's that's the way to like the seven. Yeah, seven pools or seven whatever. pools, oh, which was cool. Like, yeah. But then after that, you got to go to the town. You're like, eh, there's yeah. nothing here. When we were, and you're all sick. When from we were there, bef- hundred, dude, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Before we went there, I'd heard a story that those pools flooded catastrophically and and um, took some people out. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, like those things are real susceptible to, to rain. Yeah. Makes and, sense. I mean, yeah, where they're the, being their falls, but uh, 
I just never thought that they got that bad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, on that side, it's pretty. I don't steep. know if I'll you ever see that. See a lot of water moving through it pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that road uh, is not something I'm going to do when they go there. Nah. I, you know, Splat. if you look at like a trip to Hawaii, I don't know. A 10-day trip is a pretty good long trip. Two or three weeks is great. A week is not enough. I, I feel like if you're just going to burn an entire day of that trip, especially if it's a nice day where mm-hmm. you could be down at the beach, yeah, boogie boarding or surfing or just enjoying the beach. I, I feel like I don't want to burn a whole day of that yeah. vacation in the car. Driving. Yeah. Driving. Like that's always yeah. been a On thing On the shitty day we went to to Jaws and watched the dude surf. Yeah. Like that's when you go watch the surfer mm-hmm. dudes. Because yeah. they're out there when it's shitty. Yeah. yeah. And you go watch the waves are insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I was always surprised they didn't improve that road though. You know, it's such like a tourist location. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Nope. Keep it real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jack, you got some trivia for us? Yeah, I do. Why don't we let it rip? Fuck, yeah. See what Jay's got. Do you remember doing trivia last time? I'm not sure. Mm. Pretty sure we did. Oh. When did you come on? You, you was it? Was it? Um, uh, he was number forty-nine. Forty. No. Yeah, somewhere around forty-eight, forty-nine. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. No, JJ was forty-nine. He was fifty. Fifty. I think okay. I was forty-eight. Maybe forty-eight. Yeah. Right there in the. Okay. F- top, forty-eight top or fifty. 50. What is trivia, 40. trivia about? <clears throat> Today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you gotta hit the trivia button. Oh, din- oh din- din- <laughs> cue it up. There we go. It's like space age. All right. Um, <laughs> Jay's like, uh, what the hell did I get myself into? Okay, we were talking about <laughs> foiling. Yeah. What's the world record longest <clears throat> foil? Ooh. That's a great question. Ooh. Jay. 28 hours. 28 oh, you're hours. You're going hours versus miles? I think. Do you want miles or hours? Or meters or what? what how this is more like a trip. So you could like get off your foil and then like start again in the morning. Oh, like, but like continuous non- foilage? Yeah. Oh, distance? Yeah. Oh, uh, shoot. Uh, I, I know I, when I said 28 hours, I, I <coughs> somebody went from like six to the next day or something. Yeah. But yeah. I was thinking, but I have no idea about that. This might have been the same person, but. So like so I guess how far and how long did it take? Okay, I'm gonna say they like circumnavigated Maui. Um and it probably was I don't know how big Maui is, but I don't know, fifty six miles. And it took three days. Mileage and time. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, 10 miles and it took, it's a little short. I'm just going to go on the low end because you guys went extreme, kind of extreme. 10 miles and, uh, two hours. (laughs) I like your thinking eyes. 150 miles in two days. Ooh. All right, so this thing, he did sleep on it. It's 3.6 feet wide and 19 feet long. And uh, it looks like it has a tent on it. And he went from Santa Cruz to Hawaii. Wait, what? Yeah, and it was 2,465 miles. And it took him 48 days, 15 hours, and 15 <laughs> Whoa, minutes. What? Oh, my he flew from wow. He went from California to Hawaii yeah. on a foil board? <laughs> It was on yeah. a sub. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wasn't thinking That's about insane. that right. I this was just thinking the, like a day ride. It's a sup foil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we got that all. And he did it with a wing foil. Like this is a legitimate. Really? Wing. It's a huge wing foil. Days. Wow. So you get out yeah. to um, not a sup. Get out there to uh, Montague real quick. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I think he's still going slow. Oh, 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 Maybe pop Omar over to Valdez. He had to have had a, a mothership, and he was like sleeping on it. And shit. I don't. I don't know. That was a good one, Jack. So I think he was on it the whole time. It, when you look at the pictures, but I'm not sure. We so can read J, this story. J one, you're the closest. Yeah, that was cool. Oh. You're the winner. Okay. Right good what's job, Jay. The, what's the top speed on a wing foil? Oh. Ooh. World record. Man, I'm gonna say 56 miles an hour. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's pretty. That was right in there when I was thinking too. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'm 75. Uh, 45. You guys, uh, yeah, 31. 31. A lot of confidence yeah. in the others. 31 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, that's a record. Wow. What yeah. what well, average speed do you go? You think? Uh, eight. Nine, oh, really? ten, like a fifteen mile an hour, so ten to fifteen mile an hour wind, that's good enough to get you going. Yeah. Okay. And then when you, you the the foil will breach. You get going too fast, the foil breaches the water, and then it's over the bars. Oh, you lo- you lost all lift. Oh, gotcha. oh cause you're like pulling. Yeah. The the foil you know the foil is creating lift in the water, and if you get going too fast, then it breaches. And then you have no lift, and you mm. just go over the bars full, and full Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight to that cold water immersion. Yeah, yes. over, yeah. yeah. Or lower. <laughs> That's right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they were saying in this article yeah, that <laughs> takeoff speeds like six to eight knots, and then cruising speed is usually around ten to twelve. Yeah. Is well, there two was, little things to put your foot in? The sim, there are foot straps and stuff. You can do that. I don't have any right oh, now okay. because I'm still semi pro. Got it. And uh, oh shit. Oh, so pros use the straps. These pros use straps. Okay. And yeah, they gotta like if you're riding stuff. waves and doing tricks and stuff, you want some straps. Just but stick yeah. to you. I'm still like managing my jibes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Some fundamentals. Yeah, it's we're in Alaska. The learning curve is much steeper. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about getting pulled thirty. You'd have to have a hell of a wind. You know, I, I mean, what if you're out foil boarding in like 50 mile an hour wind? That is ripping, ripping. You yeah. might not be able to hold on. That's what I mean. Well, that's so what I was like, saying because out there in Turnigan Arm, it gets, you know, yeah, it gets crazy. Right. Oh, yeah. And that's why my, my tail was like, whoa, what if that thing would just fly? Because it was yeah. so windy, like pushing the car. Yeah. Yeah. Pull you up. And that guy was out there. Oh, yeah. Pro from Dover. Pro from Dover. <laughs> <laughs> one more, Jack? Yeah, we got one more. Okay. What was the world record tsunami? So, where was it and how big was it? Big as in like height, height. of wave? I think, height. I think the world record tsunami was right here in Alaska. Mm. Mm. And it was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to say it was like a, uh, there's like a, there's like a famous water line on a mountain. And I, and I want to say a boat, a fishing boat actually like rode it out. My flat top's flat, dude. Yeah, like a like a, a fishing boat was out fishing and it was in the swell and it got on top of the swell and it was like mountain high. So I want to say like 250, 300 foot. And then the, the, the wave cut the, the timber line on the mountain. So I want to say it's in Alaska. It's 350 feet. Okay. And you don't know the name? Of where it was the at? Bay, yeah, the bay. I want to say it was like, oh man, like just spit Ilu- it out, like the Aleutian chain okay. somewhere. Okay, all right, that's where I'm going. I'm gonna say it. um, a thousand feet Glacier Bay, <laughs> Resurrection Bay, a hundred feet. So it was Latuya Bay. It's the one Brandon's talking about. I thought maybe like you would just like if we're thinking about the name, maybe we're able to spit it out. Oh, but, I wish. And uh, it was. 1722 oh, feet Whoa. and there were four fishing vessels and two of them were closer to the mouth and those as the tsunami came in that big wave that it pushed them out before the tsunami broke on shore yeah and then the other two that were in there like never saw them again they got disintegrated yeah More yeah there's like a story of one of those boats like on top and being like in the water on a boat yeah. but looking at the mountain tops. yeah it didn't catch the wave <laughs> you know yeah like yeah. rolled off the back yeah yeah if got we, pushed out yeah if you look it up there is a like a cut line yep. in the mountain 
where it, like, to this day it wiped I out think. wiped out the yeah. timber line yeah yeah so yeah that's pretty yeah. cool Hmm. Where, 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 what bay? Where? Latuya Bay. Latuya Bay. Where is and that exactly? It's, it's like the, the, uh, what's it? What's the, what's the farther farthest north passage to southeast? Like where? Um, here it is. Like heading over to Haines and stuff. Mm. Whatever that passage is, it's the next bay north of that. Okay. Hmm. Latuya Bay. There it is, right there. This one. Uh, up. Well, I was just looking at those green images. But there's show the water there's a there, there's actually like yeah, a yeah, photo click on that. click on yeah there's one that shows oh. like where it cut is that it right there on the left right yeah there. right there try that one yeah we're like carved out the Oops. Yeah, so there's the a mountains. there's like that picture but from way back yeah there's a better photo on the water uh, image from the, from, 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 from water, water level, down. yeah. Where it shows where the where it cut, like maybe that one right there. There you go, something like that. That one there. Mm -hmm. A thousand feet. Just imagine, like oh man, Jesus Christ! My dude. house is at fourteen hundred feet. Yeah, it'd be it'd be washing so. up on your doorstep. Yeah. And th this is like the same thing that could happen in the sound right now yeah. on Barry Arm. Yeah, it's the same type of thing where if it slides, you in could there. yeah there if you get a a big uh, mudslide, landslide. That's what started that. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh the same thing started slide. that. I think so. I think you're right. It wasn't like it an might have been an earthquake that came in. It might. I think it was like an earthquake caused the slide in the original. Okay. One. Yeah, that's wicked. Well, I had a little uh, did you know fact. Oh, you got a little did you know fact? Yeah, I did. I was. Uh, well, I was looking at our agenda before we came in tonight, and um, we need some. Did you know music? Yeah, we do. We do. That'd be kind of fun. Um, but I got to thinking about the the snow bike thing, mm -hmm. and so I did a little research. And so I'll ask you guys. It might, it's not trivia. It's a little unorthodox. Did you know? But what year do you think they started the concept of snow bike tracks and a bike? It doesn't have to be exact here. Maybe just like a decade in era. Uh, no, nope. I'm not even exact here. 2002. Okay. 76. Okay. 65. 1920s, 1930s. Wow. Oh. So that was when they started to develop the concept of strapping a track to a bike. Because they made motorcycles yeah, back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. Now, <clears throat> it wasn't until, I think it was like 1980. 1980s when a dude from Boise, Idaho, actually made like a Frankenstein. Oh, nice timber sled. Yeah, um, yeah. Idaho. I want to say like 80, 89 or something like that. That uh, a dude built. Uh, actually, hold on, I got some notes here. Let me find his name. Uh, Vernal Forbes created his first motorized Frankenstein monster in his garage in Boise two decades ago. Oh. Uh, so it was back in the 80s, but. Uh, or uh, I'm sorry, ninety three, uh, but I wasn't kind of blown away. Like, did you know they started yeah. thinking about making snow bikes in the twenties and thirties? Yeah, but it didn't catch. It didn't really catch on until AKJs you know, came. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I want to say like timber <laughs> sleds has blown up in the last decade. It was definitely going on before twenty years ago. Yeah, you know, you remember the snowhawk? Yeah, you guys remember that? Oh yeah, mm -mm. like that really never. Truly bit on. What was the snowhawk? Go ahead and Google that real quick. Snowhawk was a snow machine, but it would be like a hybrid between a snow bike and a snow machine, is what I would yeah. call it. Yeah, it had a, a wider track, like maybe a twenty inch track, mm -hmm. and the ski was, and it was uh, a twin fan cooled five fifty. Oh, and it, like it looked this? like oh. a hawk. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked like a hawk and had a nose on it. I yeah, rode I one of those one. up the, in Lost the Lake. Orange, the orange and blue was kind of the more the the original um, one. Daniel, go back. Uh, th that orange and blue, mm -hmm. like that was the one. Oh, that's Jaws. Yeah, yeah, that one was kind of like the one you saw at turn again. You'd see dudes riding them around, yeah. and looks kind of jet ski ish. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, because it had like, like the belt, like the belt, clu- like the secondary yeah. and primary yeah. clutch system, and and uh, again, very underpowered. So they just couldn't really. You would get arm pump on those so fast, like you. Uh, did you, you ever ride one? Oh yeah, I rode okay. one. Andy, okay. Andy Ball and Aaron von Hessinger, the guys yeah, yeah, from the- uh, Frontier Films. Uh huh. They had them, and I yeah. rode Andy's for about five minutes. And I had arm pump, and I'm like, you were just exhausted. Yeah, I can't yeah. ride that anymore. Yep. Yeah, yeah and that, that that never really shark, it just kind of never stuck. It just <laughs> it had a it had a fad, yeah, or phase or whatever you want to call it. And then A D Bovin, I think, was the manufacturer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Well, it, it went like Bovin B O L. It went like. Everybody rode short tracks, high powered short tracks t- to send it and do flips and do shit. And then these things kind of came out and then it transitioned to like pretty extreme alpine mountain sleds. Yeah. You know, with like super long tracks, mm-hmm. super lightweight, you know, then belt drive and getting rid of all the weight. And then the timber sled is just, is like the new. I mean, I don't know if it'll ever Not like really compete edition. with like a turbo. No. Fucking, you know, it's, RMK or whatever. It's it's got its own little thing, but it's it's snow biking timber sled is totally different. It's just can, its own thing. Yeah, it's all. It's really about the turn and the feeling on a snow bike. Yeah, uh, the effortless turn, like mm-hmm. a pow tipper making a nice turn on like what you feel on skis or a snowboard. Mm-hmm. That's what the feeling you get on a snow bike. The float. Yeah, yeah, I was watching you ride, and just like you stick your leg out, yeah, and you're just kind of just your heels just kind of. Can yeah, you say something when you do that? What's that? You say something. You sing when you a do song that? or whatever. Oh, he says this is yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I mean, <laughs> isn't it good? It like I said on one of my videos, like you know, I was in valdez in the days when chopper runs were 40 bucks and it was no guide and you go wherever you want to go and just doing snowboard runs like that the snow bike brings that same feeling back to me but it mm. brings back my youth mm-hmm. and the bike takes all the punishment now because i can't take the punishment yeah. And so oh, I can. It's got good suspension. Yeah, it has dirt bike suspension on it. <clears throat> I bet riding a trail with whoops. Like the Iron Dog Trail in Big Lake or something would be fun as hell. Or does it buck you hard? You'd have to be have it set up pretty good. And it okay. is, it's possible, but it really, in powder and the stuff you dream of skiing mm-hmm. or snowboarding yeah. in, mm. doing those same turns and dropping those same uh, terrain is amazing on a snow bike because you can get to that with little or no effort. Like, totally. oh, I want to side all over here and, and drop that little cliff. Boom, you're there. It's it's now. Yeah. You, you're there. Right. Mm-hmm. So the free the freedom you get with it is is where it's at. And it doesn't tire you out as bad. No, it doesn't tire you out mm-hmm. as bad. And um Man, it's fun. Yeah. When I when I was thinking like um I'd love what, to try it. You guys are gonna try it next year. Like I yeah. talked to the motorcycle shop, they said, Yeah, we'll we'll set you up. We'll get you guys a demo, and we'll do it. And you guys, it's going to be on. Sweet. Because nice. when I when I think, I was thinking, like, well, what do I like to do in, when I'm 50 years old? What are my favorite things to do? Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what is the best? Like, this is me talking. What is my top three? I'm like, you know, surfing. Surfing uh, in Prince William Sound or by yourself or with one or two of your bros mm-hmm. on a nice day. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. And then e biking a flow trail is pretty good too. Yep. But then snow biking is just right above there. that. Mm-hmm. Just, it's like flow trail everywhere. Yeah. And just a floating flow trail. Floating yeah. flow trail. All you just blank canvas, go wherever you want, and turn effortlessly. Mm. It's just it's that listen, good. Listen to that four stroke. Whop, whop. Yeah. Well, like I had this year, I had a two stroke and a short track, mm-hmm. and next year I'm getting a four stroke, longer track, three inch. Because, like I said, I was getting my cookies eaten, but you can descend 
I'm more. Well, I look at things like snowboarding, mm-hmm. like half pipes and descending lines mm-hmm. and making turns. Yeah, that's what I look at. You know, I'm sure other people look at it, look at things similarly, similarly. But that's why I'm like, man, you could do so much with this bike. It'd be so much fun. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. We definitely need to okay. go rip. Yeah, yeah it I'll wouldn't it be fun on trails. No, it's yeah. more powder. More powder. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you want to go off. Yeah, you'd probably get your trail. ass kicked, huh? Maybe. I, I was just thinking about like a dirt bike can really flow. Yeah, it's, <laughs> take that suspension yeah. all the but way. But then it's not a wheel. It's a it's, it's a yeah a ski. So the ski's gonna. I don't know. The How would you feel about like turning on a packed trail? I we we didn't really do that. I mean, I went um, in the spring and stuff, and mm-hmm. still pretty good. Yeah. And, l- like, low snow, like, six inches of snow or two inches, as long as it's soft yeah. and mm-hmm. there's no other ruts to, to make your, pull your ski or anything like yeah. that, it's it's good. It's right. it's better than snowmobiling. Yeah. It takes less effort, and you can still do it. But a hard pack trail, getting out of a parking lot yeah. is not that much fun. Yeah. I'd never, I never even put you on any yeah. of that. Yeah. We were getting ready to like cross my driveway and go into the snowboard yeah. park. And we're like, nah, we'll just, we're yeah. cool with that. Yeah. So yeah. that's the, the kicker is like, mm. if you have to ride a long, hard trail in the, to get to the powder, mm. then you're not that stoked. But like, <laughs> um, you know, turn just, again or Lost Lake. Well, there's a trail at Lost Lake, but our placer, you know, you're straight. 30 feet of parking lot and you're out you're in yeah, yeah. actually that trail up the firehouse yeah to uh lost lake is yeah. fucking gnarly yeah, yeah. That's, not, that's tough that's, that's like a tough. one one and done all the snow bikes come in from uh snug harbor uh pl- um yeah the uh, back side uh, of uh kenai lake Kenai, there. right yeah. yeah and that is snug harbor i thought it had a different name primrose no that's the other side yeah okay that's going towards seward Okay. Snug oh, Harbor is oh, like Snug by Harbor Quartz would Creek. Be, oh, like, okay. So there's three ways in there. Yeah. I've never been in that way. Yeah. That's like a long <laughs> flat ride for a minute, and then you finally just shoot up, right? Back by Russian Lakes and stuff, and yeah. then you come up. Yeah. Yeah. Longer way. I think the firehouse just gets you there now. Yeah. But it's yeah. the snow shoots, and That's a lot fun. of guys will spend their whole day just screwed up in there. It's fun coming down that side on a mountain bike. Oh, no shit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I've always wanted to hike that oh, Lost yeah. Lake. It's a good hike. I was just talking to Emily. She said she attempted it today as she post holed up to her oh, yeah. waist no way. It's oh, not it's ready. for four no. hours with Moose, her dog, and she's like, yeah. Yeah, no. So she called me from Seward to drinking a margarita. She yeah. gave up. Nice. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. That's always That's not fun. not bad. Right. She didn't give up. Jay, what's the, what's the status on the surf game? Because uh, your bro sold his boat, right? Yeah. Hey, sing so, you know, my nephew Colton moved to Homer, and now Colton wants to be a uh, charter captain. Oh, and now my brother's looking at boats and going in with my nephew. That was the story I heard. But there's a, I mean, there's another guy that goes out there. I can't remember the name of it. What does he call himself? Uh, Fjord Tours or something mm. like that. Glacier Fjord and or Glacier. He'll drop you. Uh, no, it's just Fjord tours just he's got a bow picker and oh, okay. he takes people out there and i mean it this spring has been crazy like i was t- we're talking and it's been kind of gray and cold and mm. windy and yeah. i'm all like i just it's been dragging me down a little bit until yeah. the last couple sunny days and i got on the bike and stuff like that but i haven't i haven't been out there i might there's a i'm supposed to go to a wedding this weekend in seward i might it's pretty flat, but I was thinking about bringing my boat out and trying to get out there. Do you want to do some surfing? Oh, uh, no. Um, <laughs> I don't. I was just wondering because a buddy of mine were talking. He, he went and looked up some old footage of the Montague Cup, mm-hmm. and he didn't really know. He had went back and heard the old pod, and then it uh-huh. got him thinking. No, I started looking into it and right. just finding old videos, and he's like, those guys are fucking nuts. Yeah, man. Um, surfing and fishing and the whole thing. Oh, and I wish it still was going And down. then when you coming in th- tonight, I thought about it. I'm like, I knew I heard Scott sold his boat to um, I think Crazy Ray, right? Yeah. And Whittier, and uh, he's on his way to, is he going to go live in Hawaii? 
Mexico. Mexico. Me- Mexico. Yeah. Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, I wonder if the the Liska legacy of surfing in Alaska has come to a to an end. I oh, yeah. just wondered. Depends if people are going. I mean, I'm like I said, I like to go surfing, but I don't like too many people yeah. with me. They kind of got over popularized, mm-hmm. and yeah. so a lot of like the old like surf contingent stopped surfing there. I see. There's other spots. Something and that now was they like don't super talk about cool. Them. Yeah, <laughs> now you don't, they don't say where they go. You yeah. know, I can check with my brother and see if he's got any wetsuits left over. And, oh, and I you bet get he a does. Suit, and then me, Jack's got a boat. I've and never, I know I've never the, I know the spots. I don't know if I want to go like, yeah. learn how and to surf And we can Alaska. revive the Montague Cup. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We both are longboarders, so it'd be good waves to learn on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where we would go. Yeah, we would. It's we're yeah, it's, we're it's about so, having a good time, yeah. not like getting I, beat up. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can just sit on the boat and drink beer too. I'm good ev- with that. Everywhere or, else, uh, or yeah. hop water. <laughs> everywhere else, you learn to surf. You learn to surf with way too many people in the water. Yeah. Like there's just surfing mm-hmm. is like Great one point. of those sports it's that crowded. there's not enough resource for the amount of people that want to do it. Mm, yeah. So, but when you live in a place that people don't want to get in the water. Yeah. we can do it it's and awesome. the access is really hard yeah. so it's like alaska is like the only place i've ever surfed and had the wave to myself and my friends like every other surf trip i've gone on you have to share yeah i, I take turns i mean it jack has the boat to get us there but it and mm-hmm. i i do not my i mean i could probably get there but mm. i'm anyhow it's we far, could bro. go we could go it would be i mean Wading through silver salmon to go surfing and then surfing and then catch go fish. in the creek, catch what fish. What if I filmed from that. the boat and filmed you guys surfing? <laughs> Come on, man. You you're you're going to be on, loving bro. it. Yeah, you're I'll bring my try. kayak. I'll bring my kayak. There you go. That's it. And there you can go. catch some waves on the kayak, okay. get your feet okay. wet, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. and then you now can carry the hot go. water to yeah. the beach for some coldies. That's right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, That's you my lingo. Yeah, <laughs> paddleboard. I got yeah, some big paddleboard. fat paddleboards. You know what? I ride a paddleboard. I need, to, I need to get a paddleboard straight up. Yeah, they're awesome, man. Yeah, I need to get one. We're gonna get you out there. Do something different. It's That's fun, definitely man. outside of my comfort zone, if you will. It's like one of those <laughs> sports that, especially with the cold water, that you get into this like zone and this natural like high that like oh, you bet. rarely achieve in any other state. I bet. I may have asked you this on the last show. I don't remember. Have you ever surfed Kodiak? Yeah. Oh, a lot. Yeah? Yeah, like, you know, going. I've been going over there, hanging out with Gideon for many years down oh, at the okay. cabin. And, uh-huh. I mean, I remember we had kegs of, you know, double shovel in the creek and <laughs> double shovel gin. And, yeah, it was a bike. Gideon was caretaking this property yeah. at Surfer's Beach. Yeah. Oh. And it, we were, like, at the spot, had the only private property, land cabin, and we just surfed for – we were doing it Labor Day weekend. We mm-hmm. had the um, the Kodiak Cup. Yeah. I won it. I took Gideon and everybody else out. Didn't I tell you guys that story? Mm-mm. I don't no? recall, man. So we, Now's the time. Well, Kodiak Cup, we go over there, me – What's that for people that don't know? Well, it was, um, we made up some different rules. We had an eraser board and we made up some different rules. There was the kill zone. The fishing wasn't that good. So just kill anything was the kill zone and you got points. And everybody judged each other. Oh, all right. So at the end of the day, I go, Jack, get up there on the eraser board and write the points. Kill zone, surfing. Um, we had, uh, I can't remember the name of the term, but. It, uh, whoever was on their phone the least, oh, it was nice. like least amount of face time, time, screen time, screen time yeah. was a category. Who and can we, run from the buffalo? Yeah, the and bison. we had like you know, um, if you made dinner or something like that was a yeah, category, right, you know. Right. Okay, it was kind of positive, and nice. so, and so, over three days, everybody got up every day and gave points. And Daniel, you're the winner. You cooked. You're great. Yeah, and you, you gave me a com- You gave me a compliment. And Jack. And you. So at the end of the day, it was close. It was me, Gideon, and uh, Jonesy Paul. and Paul. Yeah. We're all within one or two points of each other. All right. Nice. And so it's like the last surfing session, and we go out. And you, when you go with somebody who knows how to surf, you listen to them. 
Gideon says, I'm only going for the magic hour. Yeah. So when Gideon goes, you go, and it's really great for yeah. that magic hour. Yeah. And then when he leaves, you can stay out there, but it's just not going to be quite as good as when he was there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyhow, so we're going surfing the last magic hour, and we're out there, glassy, calm, cannonballs, and we're riding waves. And here comes this clean out set. Huge clean, one big wave. And I'm on a paddle board. They're all surfing. So I start paddling out to try and catch it. And I will paddle out and make a turn, paddling on one side. Mm -hmm. And then you turn and catch the wave. They're all armed, you know, prone paddling, laying down. So they didn't even try to get to the wave. And they're inside. And I and it broke. And I'm here. And I take out everybody, my board, and I take out everybody. And so we go back, and and uh, at the end, the last score tally. Negative. Guess who got you the got, kill zone? You got the strike. I killed them all. They all gave me points for the kill zone, and I won the Kodiak Cup. Nice. This just mopped them up. Yeah. <laughs> But we could, we should bring back the Montego Cup, even if it was just us or yeah. a posse, because yeah. it's yeah. an incredible spot, oh, and there's so much there, and it's really mellow waves. Like I was right before I started paddleboarding and serving, I would ride in the Montego kayak. I was out there on a kayak riding waves mm -hmm. when my brother um, it's so lost beautiful the, too, man. Lost the seed or the uh, zodiac. I was riding waves on a kayak. Yeah, it's man. You just got to get in there. Man, yeah, I remember nice. going down there on a Thanksgiving weekend. I went on a hunt and was just doing a drive down that area, and I stopped and seen a group of guys out there surfing. And it was kind of like that magic hour. It was like sunset-ish time. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget, there was bison behind me on the hill. Yeah. I saw an elk on the drive down. I get down to the beach. I see humpbacks and dudes surfing. I'm just like... Yeah, oh, yeah. This place is well, fucking magical. Amazing. Kodiak is real awesome. Yeah, wicked, man. I mean, there's just not a lot of places in the world you can witness something like that in one 15 minute stretch. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. I was awesome. always bummed that you guys were doing that um, trip down to the cabin in uh, Labor Day because uh, yeah, that's moose season for us. Oh, oh. yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why we're not going to have the Montague Cup. It's moose season. Well, we just do it earlier. Just do it earlier. Yeah. Just do it like last week in August instead of first weekend of September. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Okay. Yeah, buddy. Good. Go surfing then go moose hunting. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming in and sharing the stories today. Hell yeah, man. Nice yeah, to have man. you back, Jay. You need some beats for the movie? Maybe. I got some old school. Oh, old dude, you should sick. take them up on that. Unreleased stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I'm going to into that. I'll send you a bunch and you can choose whatever you want. Some well, stuff for me and Bootsy. Yeah, I might want to pick your brain too a little bit on that because I yeah, was, give uh, me a call. Yeah, we'll have to yeah get he's up. a really good editor, man. I mean, yeah. I'm not. You you want? Uh, well, we could call me. Well, yeah, I was just saying you can call add, me. Add I'm willing something. to help out. You're a cyber guru. -go. Yeah. I'm, all right. You guys ready to snow bike? You let me know. Yeah, I'm ready. I to will snow really. I really demos. will give that a shot because that's just something that, that sounds perfect for the old bod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like especially you got the nice little. Uh, Learning uh, clinic yeah. up there. Yeah. yeah. At uh, what is your spot called? Do you have a name for it? Well, my uncle calls it the Darcy Heights. My wife's name is Darcy. <laughs> okay, so we'll just I mean, call it that. Darcy Heights. Darcy you Heights, know? it is, man. Darcy Heights. But I call it the Northern Slope because I got a snowboard park there too. Wow. All right, right. Yeah, you still got your rope toe, right? I got to bring yeah. my kids yeah. up there, man. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, bring the kids up there. You can sled down the driveway, snow bike. Or surround, snowboard, hit snowboard the, hit the snow skate, ride a surfboard down the driveway, whatever you want. Yeah, it's a it's a, a nice playground. AK, AKJ land at Darcy Heights. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. People yeah. need to watch your videos on YouTube because yeah. they're legit. This no, they uh, timber good. sledding thing is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the access Thanks. is great, and their uh, videos are you know pretty <coughs> rocking. Yep. Shout out the video, the um, YouTube and the Instagram. Well, it's just AKJ's Alaska on both YouTube and Instagram. And then Northern Border is my Facebook channel, too, because that was my business. Yeah. And then I just kind of kept going with that. So All right. that's where I'm out Everybody there. Everybody remembers Northern Border. Bro. Oh, yeah. So is the hope to have um, at the movie ready by when? 
I think uh, the festival was in November last year, so I'm so looking around the, September, October to be really close and time and, to grind. In the, yeah, that kind of. You have a time frame you want to be lengthwise. Well, their Is categories. There parameters? Their categories are either five and less or ten and less. Oh, that's easy. For the, yeah, so I'm. That's oh, for yeah. the time of the the, the length of your, length of your short yeah, film yeah, for okay. the film festival. Yeah, so I'm. Kind of like, do I just make a super hardcore f under five, or do I make a longer, you know, seven or eight or something like that? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not certain. Yeah. Depends how much B-roll you got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. B-roll. <laughs> B-roll. See, that's the thing is, like, is, do I make it, like, skate hardcore, like, bam, 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 or B-roll it and storyline yeah. it? Yeah. I'd say, yeah, yeah Build that. it up. Yeah, launch codes. Launch codes. You can yeah. just start long and then start trimming and yeah, see where you that's end up. what I figured. Start. That'd with be a really badass name for a boat. Launch code. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I always think it's just like God. Oh, that'd be a cool boat name. Put the so lead in and name. getting those codes, yeah, the backing codes. up the trailer into the car, and then the church story. Get that on film. Do it again. <laughs> just do oh, it again. Yeah. Get the AMC. That'd be epic. Eagle. Everyone's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're, there you are out there you got the code still yeah i i don't know i'm, I'm trying to like do it i don't know i i don't you know when people try and and act or or shoot a film to portray something yeah. and it looks cheesy yeah yeah it's no, the opposite of that i'm not yeah, yeah. And no, I you gotta do the real thing again <laughs> oh, I got to run the trailer into the AMS or yeah. into the uh, Honda Accord. That's right. Uh oh. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. There's no budget in the film. <laughs> That's funny. It's not maybe use that. a little clip from the show tonight. Just telling the story. I, maybe, I, yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Got some good footage of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think you had the, the other footage, too. We'll yeah, see if I, it's good enough. Yeah, we'll talk. I've got, the, yeah. I got a different story on my I, uh, recorded. So. Well, maybe I'll take this 360 stuff and I'll I'll try and do a 360 Fine. video. Well, I'll give you, I'll oh, give you the good you go. audio for it, for you telling the story. You can add that in somewhere behind something or something. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. It, and then can we get a Dooner sticker made? Oh, yeah. I'll have to work on Dooner, that. Dooner, sure. Yeah. Like, or something. I'm not mm. from the Doom. I mean, I, I don't get a lot Dooner of Dooners in here, so I'm like. <laughs> I know a Dooner, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I might, I might be able to work on that. I, yeah, like, I, don't, I don't know what it would look like. Or I know what would it look like. It's like I mean, I'll brainstorm it with Saint you. Bart's emblem, but then with a D <laughs> in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the Bartlett boys. Yeah, Saint, Saint, Bart's. Saint Bart's on the dune. Yeah, <laughs> did you ever call it that? That's what um, Rito. Yeah, Reed, called, yeah. So they used to call old, it Saint Bart's. Rush. He's no, a hockey, he's a hockey boy though. Saint Bartlett from Bartlett. Uh, <laughs> he's our, he's your age, really. Yeah, <laughs> Eagle River now. He owns uh, Odd Man Rush. Odd Man Rush Brewing. Yeah, out there yeah. in Eagle River. I don't. Awesome dude. Mm -hmm. A fellow dooner. Yep, they're everywhere. Gotta love my dude. They're even in Eagle River now. Here, mm. <laughs> dune goes all the way. No, <laughs> but I, I, I was thinking I'll make a 360 video of this podcast where. Like I said, with that camera, people can use the remote on the TV and look, make the camera oh, point wait. wherever they want it to point. Oh, does yeah. it have when you when it when you produce the sh video? Does it have like little arrows or something? Like well, if you're making a video and you want it to look that way, you you um, make it point that way and you put a uh, keyframe there. Oh, okay. But there's another way to export the movie. You export it as a 360 movie. Okay. And it's exported. You put it on YouTube. And somebody's watching it. They just can like, yeah. Just have you done on on Facebook where you can do the mm -hmm. 360 yeah, picture? Yeah, it's like that. No. And then when you move your phone, you're seeing different parts of the room. Oh, okay, I did not know. No. It's yeah. like that, but your you're doing remote. it with your TV remote, like oh. that remote, and you go like this, and it you can it see the shows the video that's, like that. That's there. really cool. I like yeah. it. That's the camera that Emily was doing her stuff with. Oh, okay. That. Yeah. yeah that mm -hmm. thing's badass. Is that waterproof? Yep. We need one of those. That needs to get on the AWP equipment list. Yep. Straight Throw up. it on the list. Yeah, we I need, know. We, yeah, we need one badly. We need to get some. Yep. On that note, visit AlaskaWildProject.com. Buy a hoodie, a t-shirt, sticker. Mm -hmm. 
Check us out, patreon.com. Throw down. We need to get a 360 camera up in you. Yeah. 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 We got uh, Bait Shack, uh, uh, Slam and Salmon Derby coming up. uh, Shit, what is today? It's going to be about a week. June 9th. Yeah, a little over a week. And then the Full Draw Film film Festival. Full Draw. It's like a bow hunting one. Oh, really? That one's going to be in Fairbanks and in Anchorage, I want to say... You have to look it up. Check us out. Go on Instagram. Follow them. Follow us. We're going to be giving away some tickets for it um, for the Full Draw Film Festival. Uh-huh. That's going to be at the Performing Arts. I want to say it's June wow. 16th. And then there's one in Fairbanks like three nights before that. Cool. So right. Double check it. Yeah. I was um, kind of bummed they picked the summer. You know? Well, yeah, they're. Pro- I don't know. They're just cruising film, around. Film festivals. You know, but they didn't. You know what they Alaska. didn't do is do it on. A weekend. Yep. I want to say it's like a Thursday night. They followed our uh, kid birthday rule. Yeah. That's Never. Right. All those kids' parents, birthday on the weekend. That's right. All those parents. Because we ain't coming. If you want people to Man. show up, have it on a Tuesday night. Yep. Everybody's yep. in town. That's right. Hot tip for all you young Actually, parents. Actually, not out there. on Wednesdays nights because that's when we record the podcast. So, yeah. Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays are off limits. Wednesdays, Tuesday Fridays, nights. Saturdays, Sundays. Off limits. Yeah. Hot tip. Well, we do. You Wednesday know, me and my brother are laughing summertime. before we close it out. Like our kids have never had like a real birthday party. They're always like Viviana turned twelve, and we're always at Anchor River. Oh yeah, it's always just like <laughs> <laughs> some cupcakes and all the kids that came on the camper trip. <laughs> That's and right. Same with Noah. We're always like on the Kenai, you know, at Quartz Creek or something, and he's never had like. <laughs> yeah. He always and brother who's winter time, he gets to do like the Dave and Buster's and the <laughs> shit oh, yeah. with his friends. Oh, yeah. And he, I was like, hey, we're gonna be on the Kenai, you know? <laughs> he's okay with it. What better place than? Enjoy your birthday, man. Yeah. That's all right. There, uh, thank you, fun. Jay, again yeah. um, for coming for in and sharing work, the man. stories. Awesome. Uh, we'll be on the lookout for the film. Thanks for that hop water. The hop water. It's refreshing. It yeah, is. Buddy. It is. Cake uh, stand. Yeah. Cake stand right <laughs> after this. We're going to 360. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Uh, thank you, Alaska. Let's keep listening. As always, stay wild. You remember my speaking to you of what I call your overcautious. Are you not overcautious when you assume that you cannot do what the enemy is constantly doing? The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. The exclusive home of Frontier Gear, built for the rugged Alaskan terrain. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Visit Barney's today at 906 West Northern Lights. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services, helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers, custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. TheTreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway, Alaska's own and grown cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation, with exclusive products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce cards, and more. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. Marijuana has intoxicating effects and may be habit forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana for the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children, and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The Bait Shack, located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Snow Pro AK, your snow and ice management company specializing in business and residential properties. They know what it takes to keep your property presentable and safe. Give them a call for a free estimate at 280-7098 or visit lawnproak.com. Double Shovel Cider Company, located off of Arctic and 58th, handcrafted Alaskan-made colonial ciders. They also have a tap room downtown on the corner of 5th and E. 
Stop by today and taste an award-winning cider. The Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaskan public lands, waters, and wildlife. Their goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping our public lands wild. Stand up today and join BHA at backcountryhunters.org. Do not claim to be at least his equal in prowess and act upon the claim. I say try. If we never try, we shall never succeed. This proposition is a simple truth and it's too important to be lost sight of for a moment. If we cannot beat the enemy where he now is, we never can. It is all easy if our troops march as well as the enemy. And it is unmanly to say they cannot do it.